The typical strength training fanatic increases the risk of injury. It's true, getting stronger often makes you more resilient to injury. Not if you do it wrong. A lot of people that lift weights daily actually increase the risk of injury. They make themselves literally more fragile. There's more to that though. A lot more, Yeah. a lot more. It's really, it really has to do with, so a lot of people don't realize that injury uh, in, plainly is due to weakness, but really what it has to do is being unstable. And what happens if you always strengthen your body in the same planes of motion, right? And this with the same exercises, the ratio of strength that you have in that plane that you always train in to other planes is disproportionate. It, it's no different than putting a engine in a car that's too powerful for the frame and right. you hit the gas and right. it twists the frame. So you have all these people that lift weights and they do the same, you know, the, the best exercise, squat, deadlift, bench press, overhead press, yeah. but then they never train laterally. They never rotate. They never strengthen their body to, to accomplish balance. Then they go to the park, they throw a Frisbee. Oh, this is where you see themselves. people yeah, yeah, fall in the shower and they get hurt or like reach back abruptly to, to grab something mm -hmm. and they, <laughs> they throw, uh, you know, their muscle out. And so it's, it's just one of those things that people don't really consider that, uh, getting really strong too. Also, uh, if you're not balancing that out with, uh, stability and, and mobility, you're, you're leaving yourself open for injury. It, totally. it took me a long time to realize this cause you, you get a client who's in advanced age, they've been lifting for 15, 20 years, and you would think that client is less likely to get injured doing mm -hmm. silly stuff. But it was, they always got hurt doing that. It was never when we were deadlifting three or 400 pounds. It was never when we were squatting a bunch of weight or doing exercises in the gym. Yep. It was always like this weird movement out, so pulling a weed, yeah. reaching back to feed your kid in the in the car. It was always picking up a shampoo bottle down in the, in the shower. It was like, this makes no sense. I don't understand. It took me a long time to figure that out as a trainer. I didn't realize that it was uh, it was my fault of neglecting all the different planes of motion and always getting them so strong in like the sagittal plane. There's all the an time. Uh, there's an ideal ratio of strength with muscles and supporting muscles and agonists, which are the prime movers, antagonists, which are the ones that are um, that you're opposing. Like there's this there's this proper balance that needs to be maintained. And if you get really strong in some and the other ones lag behind, that balance is thrown off. And then you, you know, look, I experienced this. Like I'll go in the backyard and throw rocks with my kid and then my shoulder sore. Yeah. yeah. And I could go overhead press 200 pounds and you know, whatever. And it's because I lack the stability. My prime movers are generating more force than my body can maintain because I don't train those stabilizers. You know, what's funny about this. The average person listening who's like, I don't care. I just want to look good. You can tell by the way somebody moves and the way they look, whether or not they're balanced often. In mm -hmm. fact, the, the whole meathead stereotype yeah. of the guy walking around rigid, looking stiff yeah. or whatever. Uh -huh. The reason why they look and move stiff is their body is trying to keep them in a particular range of motion. It's literally trying to make them move a particular way because it's trying to protect them from injury. So you're like, wow, that guy looks... Yeah. Don't muscle let bound. him turn and rotate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it know? looks stiff. And Easy rotation. And it's usually the and it's the body saying, we will only keep you in this range of motion. So, you know, in terms of aesthetics, pictures are different than real life. <laughs> in real life, aesthetics can also be displayed through movement. Like somebody who moves well, I mean, you, you can see someone looks all fit, but then they move awkward. They don't look so good. And the reason why I'm saying this, I'm selling this to the average person, right? The average person who could care, they're, mo they're mainly focused on aesthetic. It's like, you will actually look better if you do this. Not to mention, there is a a limiter in terms of how much strength you can build. Yeah. It, that you, it, When your body feels like it, it's too unstable, that's it. Your bench press ain't going up. Your deadlift ain't going up. Well, it's it's funny because like I hate using the word functional strength just because it's been like- Bastardized. Yeah, bastardized, yeah. but- it's just one of those things you got to consider what you're facing with challenges every single day and just like, you know, uneven surfaces that you're walking up or like something that you has to like something happens. You have to move really fast. All of a sudden, that's a big one is like when people have to move fast and then and then slow down really fast. <laughs> like both of those things, if you're not training that at all. Uh, your body's going to overreact. Your muscle's going to overreact. You're going to pull something, you know, uh, and it's it's just one of those things. If you're not practicing it and, and you're not training it, uh, you're going to you're going to get hurt. Well, yeah. this is why we say that there's it would not be ideal to follow any of the programs that we've written indefinitely, except for maybe maps performance and maybe symmetry now. Yeah. Right. 
And it's because we don't ad address that specifically. Performance in has to be the most complete one in that sense, right? That's what I mean, yeah. right? So it's the only program that you could probably run that indefinitely and feel Never like- Never run into this problem. Yeah, and we've we've covered those bases. You're going to get strong. You're going to look good. You're going to be able to move in different planes, protect yourself, the anti-rotation stuff that's Have in balance. there. Have balance. Yeah. You're not hitting any huge plateaus or sticking points. Yeah, everybody wants to keep doing MAPS anabolic over and over again because- it the builds gains, a lot of strength and muscle. Come on hard, yeah. But if yeah. you follow MAPS Anabolic over and over again, you will start to have problems because there's no lateral movement. It wasn't designed, it wasn't supposed to be that, right? There's no lateral movement. There's barely any rotation. Um, I did this with uh, myself uh, with the deadlift. That's one of my favorite exercises. And uh, I pushed it for a, for a bit there to see if I could hit a new PR. And I did, but I noticed I kept getting like this low back pain on the side. Couldn't figure out what was going on. I'd slow down my... My lift, they do all kinds of different. And then, you know, of course, you're always training other people better than yourself when you're a trainer. I said, what would I do for a client? I'm like, oh, it's, I don't do anything laterally yeah. at all. Did some QL work, some lateral slat, uh, sled drags, and poof, you know, pain I feel gone. like a lot of times people feel it coming on. Like they've been training in just that one plane for too long, or even for me when I was bench pressing too long, uh, I just inevitably started to feel like, you know, my shoulders were Stiff. sort of just forming into that position and then I was getting <laughs> rigid. And then, you know, even then bench pressing started to work against me and I felt a pain and an impingement there starting to form. So it's just like, you got to listen to your body and you got to actually uh, train so you feel good, not just look good. Well, but speaking of the training, did you guys have like specific movements or a movement that you liked for clients like to like address this? Like, obviously there's, there's not one movement that you just have them do forever, but mm -hmm. are like, were there exercises that were like, oh, this was like a go-to movement to address this with my, all, all my clients? Yeah. When I, with, for shoulder mm -hmm. stuff, uh, stick dislocates, um, and then just good old basic external rotation, right? The good old rotator cuff exercise yeah. was always good. These were of course, general clients, right? Not the super strong, I'd probably have to do something else uh, for them. Uh, then for for hips, it would be some kind of a lateral strength training move. This was before I really learned about like priming, like we do with Maps uh, Prime Pro type of stuff. And then the knee, the knee was also lateral. It's, it's funny because we used to foam roll all the time. And then I realized that foam rolling is kind of like a Band-Aid. Yeah. And I had people do like a leg swing, like a stupid leg swing. Yeah. And it would, help, it would help with their knee pain. Yeah, I mean, I try, I try to to be sneaky about it and add rotation with pressing or add, you know, rotation wherever I feel like there's an opportunity. Um, one of them, I can. A lot of people give me grief about the matrix lunges, but I, I would do this all the time with my clients just to add that in. Yep. So it kind of covered the basis of lateral movement and then, uh, you know, the transverse plane. Uh, but, and also step up. Sometimes I would like add that in with different ways to, um, do that with on a lateral plane. You know, it's funny. I bet you, you know, how many times I did that kind of stuff, not because I understood the benefit of training different planes, but because I was trying to razzle dazzle my client. <laughs> <laughs> <You're true. laughs> <Razzle -dazzle -dazzle. laughs> Magic man. I, it was like, it was like on accident, you know, I did something good for them. Mine was that. So I used to have, so if you had like the boxes in front of me right here and instead of facing the box, I would face sidestep to the side and I would open the hip. To yep. step up, to stabilize, to touch my toe. Oh, that was a good one. And I used to tell my clients that if after if I'm long gone and we don't train anymore, if you can just maintain that skill, like keep that skill mm -hmm. of everything I've taught you, like, and that's not discounting the value of getting strong in the squat and deadlifting and overhead press, like all those obviously are incredible movements. But it, I think it addresses so much in in one movement that the ability to be able to perform that movement with good form and technique as you get it into advanced age, I think is such a powerful Here, exercise. Here's a telltale clue. I don't even think it's a clue. This is like literally what's happening if this happens to you, okay? Because sometimes people hurt themselves and it's, you know, quote unquote freak accident or, you know, something happens. Fine. But if you have a repeated issue which 90% of people watching this who hurt themselves know what I'm talking about, where it's like, yeah, it's always my left shoulder or yeah, it's always my upper back on the right or it's always my low back on the left. It's always my whatever. If you have a repeated injury that pops up every once in a while and then you got to kind of take it some time off and relax and let it go away and then you start training and then it pops up again, that is a clear sign of an imbalance and mm -hmm. it's a clear sign that you can fix it. Mm -hmm. If you have that repeated thing, I have those. Yeah. Every, yeah I, have <laughs> I think those. everybody does. I think yeah. it's a matter of being aware or self-aware and knowing that. And then also the, having the, 
the tools or the knowledge to know how you go about it. Cause that's the, that's the challenge yeah. is like you get something where somebody has like an aching knee and they think it's their knee. Mm -hmm. You go, Oh, I have, I have bad. How many times have you heard? I have bad knees when actually has nothing to do that with, with that at all. It's actually weakness and instability in the ankle or the hip mm -hmm. that's causing your knee. But you, you interpret that as I have bad knees, right? Yeah. Whatever. When it's in reality, strength. yeah, it has nothing to do with that at all. There's weakness and instability somewhere else. Mm. I just think, yeah, we're creatures of habit and it's like, we just form into the same routine. And uh, a lot of people just uh, don't realize the value a lot of times of challenging themselves with, you know, the stuff that they're like, oh, this is, I don't like this because I suck at it. Or it's like, it's, you know, it's not uh, as sexy and it's not like, you know, purely just driven to build muscle. It's like, you know, it's movement based. You know how many exercises I avoided forever because yeah. I, I wasn't strong at them? Yeah. So stupid. I mean, yeah. same. I mean, everybody's guilty. <laughs> like Bul Bulgarian split stand squats. Yeah. I didn't do for years because I'm like, I'm going to grab 20s. Like, <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> is there yeah, a room? My girlfriend at the time would like kill, like smash me with the weight Did she you? could do versus yeah, like, you know, Bulgarians. I was like <laughs> super embarrassed. You know, I want to go back to the one that you pointed out, Justin, because I think there's, there's like magic in, in, in this uh, understanding, right? Like you would take an exercise like a shoulder press, which is a pretty staple movement that everybody would agree that mm -hmm. should be in e pretty much every routine. And you would do it with like a dumbbell or a kettlebell and do it in a spiral motion, right? Right. And so finding ways that you can do traditional movements or like the matrix lunge, you brought that one up, right? Or like I said, the opening up with the step up with the, like if you can find ways to just slightly modify a very traditional movement to add tremendous benefits to it like that, I think- that's the key is teaching people how to be able to do that. How to assess in a movement, go like, oh, I've been doing it this way for so long. How do I adjust this to protect myself in, in other points? An easy way to do is yeah. just do it unilaterally, you know? Like, do it with right. one side because yep. the other side that's has to huge. stabilize. That's like, that's like a basic easy hack. Uh, yeah, you know, for some of that. Yeah, I think that's the probably the easiest, and the and that, that's like why it requires too, I, the least amount of programming understanding. Right, right. That's just, I would say that because yeah. you yeah. still would. I think you'd want to to do something. No, what you're saying is better. Right, but I'm listening. I'm thinking like, oh, the average person is going to like, yeah, that's like your do a step. deadlift with a twist yeah. or something weird, which yeah. you don't want to do. You know, <laughs> <laughs> deadlift with a twist. You know what I mean? Yeah. I heard I heard Adam say, well, don't get that creative. <laughs> no. <laughs> Today's workout program giveaway is Maps Powerlift. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. We also have a sale this month on some workout programs. MAPS Performance is half off, and our Extreme Fitness Bundle of programs is also half off. If you're interested and you want to sign up, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Uh, Speaking of interesting around fitness, a study just came out that compared Tai Chi to cardio for blood pressure. Okay, do you guys know what Tai Chi, you guys have seen Tai Chi. Oh yeah, I do. So, tai Chi is not like in, if, like in the standard context of what you consider a workout, right? Cardio, you're sweating, you're working. Tai Chi is like, it's slow, you're moving. Yeah. It looks it's more very, meditative. It's very- uh, It's like it, zen. Yeah, and it's a, a, like breath work is part of that. Yes. And so that's yes. such a huge key to it, heart rate, blood pressure, and the correct. ability to control that. Totally. Is, it, beat, it beat cardio oh, yeah. for blood pressure, which just goes to show how much of blood pressure issues is due to physiologically, yeah. you know, physiological poor health. Sympathetic state. And sympathetic state. Yeah. Yes, dude. Yeah. That's it right there. Like, I, So I love to see that in also compared to like um, cold dipping, right? So that I had my cousin over over the weekend and or my buddy was over and he was asking me about the, the cold dip. He's like, oh man, I really want to do that. I've never, I've never done it before. And I was explaining to him because he, it, like, again, I think what happens is it gets, it's gone viral. So everybody like looks at it as a challenge. Like, yeah. can I go and, and yeah. do it? And I remember the first time, the very first time uh, we ever did it when Justin had been the only one that had gone through the Wim Hof training. And there's an old, old video on, on our YouTube channel where we did the ice bath challenge. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah. And you and I had no experience, yet, but yet we're competitive, right? So yeah. my thought process of going into that is like, I can, I can bear it. Like just, I can, yeah, I can deal with it. I can tough it out. Yeah. And there was, there was no chance. Like Justin was in there drinking a beer five minutes later. I don't know. And I remember like, <laughs> I remember a minute, minute and a half in flex, and it was dude. like, it was, it literally felt physically impossible to keep going. It was, there was no, no amount of grit that I could summon 
to get it's through. The, it was a paradox. You had to relax it, to make it exactly. Work. And yeah. so it, it didn't dawn on me that like, oh my god, like the, this the key to this is actually to completely try and calm yourself, which is also the real the real benefits lie, right? Yep. The ability to calm the That's heart rate. Training. Yes, calm yeah. the heart rate down, breathe through it, uh -huh. and then all of a sudden it actually gets true. It gets way easier. Yeah. But if you try and grit through it, and so when I think of things like the Tai Chi, like it's similar Dude. in that fashion of like you're being able to regulate and control your breathing and that has tremendous I, benefits. I used to be able to get my clients yeah. to significantly lower their blood pressure from one reading to the next simply by having them visualize and relax. Like yeah. literally we do a reading, then we do some visualization, relax, deep breathing, do another test. You know, people oftentimes will get high blood pressure tests simply because they're White at the doctor. syndrome. Yeah. 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 Simply because they're at the thing. doctor. What's it called? White, White coat, coat syndrome. syndrome. Oh, I didn't know that's what Yeah, where people go in and their blood pressure goes up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm at the doctor. I mean, just think about, too, like how important that is if, like, obviously that's a, a, a focused moment, right, in, the in time of the day, but, like, how often that's happening all day long. Yeah. That you're in this, like, heightened state always and you yeah. don't even realize it because that's become your norm yeah yeah and some then, people they have a really hard time with calming down like even ha like getting into that parasympathetic state yeah. it's like it's just it's it's always like dry Dude, I, i've go. been that's been a practice for me lately because my so my three-year-old is just all of a sudden he decided and the kids go through this right all of a sudden he decided in order to go to sleep he has to have mom and dad in there with him until he falls asleep so this is like a <laughs> nightly thing every night and i'm just so frustrated because we put him down at seven and he he tells us, I don't want to sleep. It's like, no, we're going to lay here, buddy. <laughs> so last night we're in there laying with him. He's climbing around doing a thing. And I could feel myself get frustrated. So I have to kind of bring myself. And I'm like, you know, I thought about I put a, a pain in context. I'm like, you know, he's not going to want this. Like one day he's going to not want me in his room yeah. at all. So that, that brought everything down. But uh -huh. it's still frustrating. I could feel my blood pressure do this and this and this and this. <laughs> this is completely that. unrelated, but in, in terms of like trying to, to flip the script a bit like i was uh I, I don't know i caught myself like hammering the boys a lot about video games and stuff like just constantly okay you can only have this amount of time mm -hmm. and um you know and then you take it away and it's a fight and blah 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 so uh in plus two like i'm i'm kind of trying to find w opportunities that i can have conversation and like peer into their world a little mm -hmm. bit so, you know, they're really in the Fortnite right now. And I'm like, I, dude, this is stupid. Like what? Like I was just like sitting there, like watching him play. I just kind of like walked around the corner and I was like peering in to see like, well, what's all the fuss about it. So uh, I was like, here, let me play. So I just started playing with them. And then I was like, I totally suck. You know, I think I told you one time I tried this with like Call of Duty and I was getting my ass kicked. And then, like, <laughs> yeah. My son was like talking trash to me and I almost choked him out because I just was like, you know, <laughs> they don't know how like, competitive their me, dude. Yeah. Like I'm <laughs> so competitive. <laughs> Uh, that I just like abandoned the idea. Did but, you throw the controller? No. So okay. I was just like, okay. I was just like trying to like calm down. Like, you know, go, I'm, I'm like, I suck. And he's trying to like teach me all these things and I'm going through it. And uh, he, they got so excited that I was playing the stupid game. And they're like, you know, texting their friends and calling. And they're like, we're going to, they're, they're trying to teach me now. And like, I'm going to try and see if I can oh, like see. carve a window where I'm like, okay. I'm going to focus on trying to actually play and like get, you know, find my way in their world just for that minute. I, you know, I feel like there'll come a time and you guys obviously are either have gone through it or go through it now is like when I, I'll feel challenged with that, like that balance, right? Mm -hmm. Like obviously there's examples. I mean, I brought it up the other day, like the kid who taught himself how to drive race cars on, you know, yeah. his video game and is yeah. now a pro race car driver. Now we know that's an anomaly, right? It's like one in a million or even crazier num number than that. But yet there's these opportunities for kids to be able to do stuff like that. And so if my son likes it, he's good at it. How do I balance that? Like wanting him to be able to enjoy that, pursue that, potentially go after that if that's something he wants. But at the same time too, I don't want you to be socially awkward, locked in your room and that's all you do. It's like such a, a such a challenging yeah. like well, thing to we, tackle. We just went extreme and now we've, told our the little my three-year-old that the tv's broken so he can't watch it anymore <laughs> <laughs> and it's his it's way it's more work you I know wish I could do that. but he's he's his behavior is way better but what you yeah. said justin is interesting because it's so funny so i have teenagers right and trying to connect with teenagers sometimes feels impossible it, because it yeah you're like the you know you're like the dad and uh uh you know what is that american pie or whatever where dad's like hey you know and the oh son's like get out of my room you know <laughs> 
Anyway. I said the cringiest thing, and they totally both stopped what they were doing, and they laughed at me. <laughs> what, what this first time this happened in a long time. Because uh, well, they were, like, saying something, and I was like, you know, um, it, to be cool, you got to zig when everybody zags. Oh. And then they were just like, oh, <laughs> like that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. You know? I'm like. Oh man, that did sound. Good. <laughs> that did really. That did that. I thought that was gonna land. That yeah, land. I'm like, ah, oh, that sounded better in my head. <laughs> no, no. So I'm trying to connect with them. So Jessica sent me this this uh, clip. There's this uh, this, uh, this preacher, and he's a really interesting uh, Instagram page. And he said, um, he said in, he told a story about his kid and how he was trying to get his kid to come out of the room. Come out of your room. You're in there all the time. Whatever. And then they'd sit there awkwardly. Whatever. So then he said, no, what I did, what I tried was, I knocked on my kid's door. And I said, can I come um, in? yeah, hey, can I come in? Sure. And then I just sat on their bed and hung out. And then they just started talking. And I tried that with my daughter. And it totally worked. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I knocked on the door. She was, you know, whatever, hanging out. And I said, hey, can I just sit here for a bit? Sure. And I sat down and like seven minutes later, we're talking about all kinds of different things. So meeting them where they're at, basically, right? Yeah. Your kids are playing mm -hmm. video games. Yeah. You're like, let me do this with you. And then you got bonding. Well, yeah. And it's just like, I, I don't know. I just... It, you get caught in patterns of like, I always felt like I'm just coming down, I'm hammering, I'm hammering, I'm hammering. And uh, of course, I'm still trying to create opportunity to do things outside and be more active and like have like healthy habits established. But too, like, you got to understand, like, they're having a lot of fun doing this thing. Yeah. And like, I'm just like, I don't want to be such a uh, tyrant, you know? <laughs> so yeah. just to try and like, I don't know, show them a little bit of like interest in their world. Uh, you know, it was going pretty far. So I was like, I'm going to try really hard to, to keep it up for a bit, but did you like the game or was it, is it mean, as dumb as you thought it was it's fine? It's, it, you know, it's not as cool. Isn't as the it the one that they can actually build like in, in it, right? Within it is Fortnite like no, that. That's Minecraft. You, so, I thought you could build your own levels and things I like that. I think Fortnite's the one with Probably, characters that they try to shoot each other. They're killing yeah, each other. Yeah, they try right? and shoot each other. But they're like other. weird looking characters. Apparently, and, like Disney just created this whole like uh, map where uh, they just spent like, I don't know, it was like a couple billion or what? something to, yeah, to, to create this whole like. Uh, immersive world where they have like Concerts. Star Wars, they have like all wow. these yeah different kind of maps that they use. But in skins, this is a big thing. Is Dances. They, like, they have they have very specific like like outfits and characters that like you can get only in that season. So and so you like collect them, and so they're a bit real big on that. Tell me how you guys you have to be able to see how this connects over to the Apple Google conversation, Apple conversation, totally. the, you goggles. Mean the goggles, yeah. Imagine, remember we talked about, I remember a long time ago when I brought up, there was people that were like paying for like the, the skins, like digital skins yeah. to put like outfits. And that was like the future is like yeah. Gucci will not only sell a, you know, a thousand dollar garment, but you could also get a digital version for X amount of Did dollars. Did I tell you my son got yeah. ripped off once for that? Uh -uh. He had collected a skin. Somebody offered to buy, no, no, he had offered to buy a skin. He ended up paying the guy money, not getting it in return. Yeah. It was his first lesson in, in fraud. So, I, I, so, so think about that. Like, you know how we talked the other day, like how you could like digitally put somebody else's face with the Apple yes. goggles. Uh, Imagine when you're going to be able to dress them or yourself, like you'll have skins uh, like yeah, that. Weird. Like a purple dragon yes. or something. I mean, and you'll, you'll, and you'll pay that to be able to do that. And that'll be like a thing, like a guarantee that's going to be a thing. That's so, weird. Yeah. No, it's, I mean, that's the part that I think I, I worry the most about with my son is that. You know, some of these ones that are so immersive that the things that he does in it is more the social interacting than like the yeah. actual. Like, I guess I, I care less about like Call of Duty, race car games, things that it's just like that. It's like, but if like this is the way you. If he's substituting real human. Yeah, like this is like, like oh, I'm going to meet my friends and we all meet yeah. in Fortnite and that's the only way that we play and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. And I don't think that the, the move is as a dad to no, you can't do those things. It's more like trying to fill it with other things or there's other things we do first before we, we do that. Yeah. So I think mm -hmm. some sort of outdoor physical activity, chores, homework, yep. schooling all stuff, like yep. like checking all those boxes. Sports still uh, and still or sports are played physically. Yeah. Right. Like, or, person. or like if we're going to play this in the virtual world, we're going to do this in the real world. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, I think finding ways to, 
I mean, it's kind of like the diet thing, like we always yeah. talked about, right? Like the it's, we know this with adults. Why would it be any different with children? Like instead of telling them they can't have this thing, it's Let's like trying to add things into their life that you know are going to be yeah. beneficial for them socially, mentally, and physically. And, and, the totally. and, and I think uh, you know, for me, it was like I saw a lot of good habits and patterns that like Ethan especially was like establishing, and he he just got his first job like uh, coaching these these young kids in, in his gymnastics. That's so great uh, place. So I was like, you know, this is really i like what he's doing he's spending extra time uh he goes right after school to go coach and then he trains right after that and this was all on his own accord yeah. and so i was like you know like I'm, I'm gonna try and like do something fun with him no you guys are that's that's you guys are doing great with that I, arthur brooks he said that there was some data on c connecting virtually versus in person so like facetime and stuff like that and they yeah, found that you get the dopamine yeah you miss the oxytocin you don't get the oxytocin yeah which, which is, is the love hormone, right? It, that's the that's how you develop uh, connection and love. Bond, yes, bonding, yes. right? But so the, the but the dopamine without the oxytocin is how you develop. It's like drinking seawater. Like oh, it's oh, I'm never drinking water. Yes, and it gets uh, worse and worse and worse, and then you can't figure out why you're anxious and depressed. Right? Because yeah. you, you think need, you're drinking all this water, but it's not. Yeah, yeah. 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 I, I think that's the, I think that is the the area where the, these kids are missing is they think that they're being social because they're like, what are you talking about? I, I was they, playing with not. my friends. Yeah, but they're, but they're not. not. Speaking yeah. of diet, you brought up diet. I want to talk about some of glutide and the GLP-1 uh, agonist. Because, didn't you say the Rogan was going... Tell me so what happened. Yeah. I listened to that episode. I mean, I've been listening to a few of his episodes lately where uh, it keeps getting... Uh, they, they keep pointing attention to Ozempic specifically and like some people they know that have had gastrointestinal side effects from it. Uh, and, and we've heard about the paralysis yeah. and, and that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, there was, <laughs> there was a really weird one. Uh, actually the, this lady who, um, she claimed that uh, like she had like skin burns, uh, <laughs> like inner genitals and things like, yeah, after using the, a similar, some glutide. And so they, they, they researched that and it was like, of course not. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it was like she some really weird. Yeah. Some weird, <laughs> what, <laughs> what is this honey? Weird yeah. articles Must out be there. Some people, yeah. Like reporting feedback that they're kind of they're trying to trace it back no. to the, i mean remember we, we called the, the propaganda war is yeah. is only going to ramp it's, up it's a medical intervention okay so it has there's always going to be potential side effects the data is pretty good though it's actually pretty damn compared to any other weight loss intervention that's ever existed it crushes them in terms of potential side effects it risks and effectiveness Here's the important thing, though, that I think that because there is some truth to something else that's being said, but people don't understand the context. If you lost weight on your own and all you did was eat less, that's all you did. You just ate less. What your body would do is it would lose fat and it would lose muscle. This is across the board. So mm -hmm. the reason why you lose muscle along with the body fat is your body is trying to meet the new energy intake. So it's trying to create balance. It'd be no different than you making less money and figuring out how to spend less money to, to, to balance it out. So if you just diet, you end up losing body fat and you end up losing muscle. This is why we always say, keep your protein intake high. That helps offset it and lift weights. Lift that weights, definitely yep. offsets it. Okay. So when people go on some agglutide or another GLP-1 agonist, because there's more that are coming out, they'll lose 10, 15% of body weight pretty consistently. Okay. In the studies where people just do that, they also lose muscle. Well, it's because they're eating less. Mm -hmm. If they lift weights, and eat high approach and make sure they hit their protein intake, they're going to lose body fat and not lose muscle. So that's the muscle loss like thing that people are talking about. It's that people just go on it and do nothing else. It's no different than going on a diet. So I, I think I'm personally, I'm, I'm less pro it than I am anti it. Meaning like, I don't, I definitely am not like a huge fan of it, but if I had a client that wanted to use it, utilize it, I think that I would communicate exactly that so they understood it because I'm, I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it for these reasons. And the reason why that is, is because take that out of the equation, that's all already one of the biggest challenges I ever had as a trainer and coach. Mm -hmm. We talk about it on the show at nauseum totally. is that clients don't hit enough protein intake. Why is it always the number one thing that we say? Like, mm -hmm. hey, if you're not going to do anything, change anything right now, just go hit your protein intake. Watch what that does for your, your overall diet, watch what it does for your metabolism, watch what it does for building muscle. If you add in lifting weights and and hitting your protein intake, the, the then that grows even exponentially more. You get leaner, you build muscle. Yeah, thing. but the problem is that hurdle right there in itself is less than half the people even accomplish that. So, mm -hmm. And my, my thought is that the same people that are challenged with doing that consistently are the ones that are most likely to want to buy this 
So that's the problem I have. Uh -huh. Now, if you're the person who checks those boxes and you're like, Adam, I eat protein very consistently and I lift weights, then I see tremendous value in utilizing a tool like that. But that's just not most people. So buyer beware. Yeah. If I was a trainer now training people and this was is available, I would use it as a potential coaching tool. Okay. So in other words, semaglutide, it makes you eat less. Now it doesn't do so like the other medical interventions that existed before where it raises catecholamines, norepinephrine, you know, raises your heart rate. So like stimulant based appetite yeah. suppressant, like Adderall, right. Or, or something like that will do that. It works through a completely different mechanism in the brain. Um, but it does make you eat less. Now, the way I would work with a client is I, they would use this and then we would learn how to work with the reduced appetite to develop new habits that we can then keep while going off. Yeah. I wouldn't do it without a coach yeah. because what'll happen 100%. is, and I'll, I guarantee this is what'll happen. You'll go off and the behaviors will go back to where you were before because appetite goes back up. You've built no behaviors around how to deal with, you know. That's how I look at it. I yeah. mean, if, if people are just uh, getting prescribed these medications, but they don't have an actual plan with a coach attached. Work with a coach if you do Work with it. a coach. Yes. Uh, yeah, because too, like you have to apply better behaviors. Like th th this all has to lead towards healthy behaviors in order for anything good to happen out of it. Uh, it's not like a miracle drug. It's, no. It's just... What I do like about it is what Dr. Seeds kind of brought up when he was on the show about, uh, you know, lowering brain inflammation and and uh, providing that ability to make better cognitive decisions. Like it's it's a lot of times it's it's cloudy and it's you, you know why we're not talking about interrupted. That? We're not talking about that because the selling point is weight loss. Yeah, I don't even care about the exactly. weight loss. Like I'm all about that. The most exciting thing about the GLP ones is its potential to help rewire the brain with. Uh, habits that people use as coping mechanism. So they find in data that studies that people drink That's less That's the alcohol. most interesting thing to me. Yeah. yeah. Th th they'll stop smoking cigarettes. They're less likely to gamble. So that's interesting. That's where I think fascinating. That, yes. But because people lose weight, because that's where a lot of people use, you know, that's how people cope yeah. mostly is they eat more food or whatever. That's the selling point, you know, yeah. even though, in my opinion, but if you're going to use it, work with a coach. It's no different in my opinion. Well, it's a little different, but it's similar to like hiring a trainer and you show up because you know the trainer's waiting for you there. If if you always rely on that, the second you're not working with a trainer, you're going to stop working out. But if you work with a trainer and then that allows you to take that next step to build that that behavior, that habit to to get things moving, then a trainer can be extremely valuable. That's how I think of something like like some you know, speaking of like inflammation in the brain, so with that, did I hear you say that the 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 Ned's brain blend does that? Is it have? Is it got anti-inflammatory properties to it? Like how cannabinoids that in general um, ha, uh, can yeah. can reduce uh, inflammation in general. Too many cannabinoids, like if you like if you smoke a lot of weed, um, then we'll have some kind of negative. Because yeah, I thought that I have thought so obviously smoking weed's inflammatory, but yep. that's also because you're ingesting this hot smoke, right? And, and oh, the, else the actual weird. smoke, yes. But if you consume it, it's all anti-inflammatory across the board. But it does cause some pruning of some parts of the brain, which is why you get like the the, the memory loss with it. But the brain blend from Ned is pretty amazing. So it doesn't have it's it's got cannabinoids that don't have an effect on the body like THC. Um, it's got higher amounts of cannabinoids that have been shown to be pro neuronal health, so the, the health of the brain. And then there's other compounds in there like lion's mane that have been shown to be good for the brain as well. And I can really, cause I, so I haven't had yeah, you cannabis. You can feel in, the effects of it. I haven't had cannabis in like months now, right? So I've been off completely. The brain blend, like I feel that big time now. Yeah. I'll yeah. take that. Yeah. And within 40 minutes, it's like, I remember what a difference it was when I stopped, podcast. when I stopped smoking and then you using that. Cause I noticed it before, but not like, like the no, way. Cause I'm like more sensitized now. Because, yeah. Uh, it wasn't yeah. so. Do you feel like there's a, um, like that it, it peaks or is it one of those things where the more you take it, it starts to compound like other like adaptogens that we've talked about before oh. where it's like, do you feel like the consistency of using it, the, the effects are compounding or do you feel like you feel the most at the beginning because it's novel and then your body kind of plateaus off it? Can I think the second one. Yeah. yeah. I think your body adapts to cannabinoid, uh, like, like, like continual chronic cannabinoid use. So I think, so there might even be value in like yeah. cycling that or only yeah, using use it, it intermittently. For, yeah, yeah. Or only using it for specific things, right? I'm trying to get this out of it for yep. this event or speaking engagement. Exactly. Yeah. Whatever. So it's got Bacopa in there. That raise, that's uh, for blood flow to the brain. Oh, the it's got oil. lion's mane in there, which is great for, again, for growing new, you know, neuronal connections, Siberian ginseng, which is an adaptogen along with all the other cannabinoids. So that's, that's what makes it work. Um, so damn well, it's mm. my, it's, it's my favorite one. That's yeah. the one I use uh, before we podcast. 
typically. Love it. Love it. But I wouldn't use it uh, every single day. I think on a daily uh, basis, um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't use. It. I would use it more like three days a week. Yeah. Type of deal. Yeah. Or like I said, just cycle on and off or use it intermittently for specific things, right? Mm -hmm, like I, mm -hmm. I always found like using, like when we would go do live events, like the calming stuff for the sleep blend and things like that. Speaking, was, of, speaking of which, did you know that they're, they did a huge pardon of uh, people in federal prisons for cannabis related? I know they talked about that. Can you really? look that up, Doug? I, I think you have to, it has to be like, a, there's like a certain threshold, but I think they're like pardoning everybody. Hmm. And getting them out of, you know, of course it's election season. They need more vo voters, right? So, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> convenient. They wait till now. Yeah, huh? I want to know how. I want to know how many, and then what are the stipulations? Like, if you went into prison for, I, I think you can't have other violent, any violent crime or anything like that. I think it's just like just the cannabis. That's a lot of people, though, bro. There's a lot of people in jail for just like moving weed. Oh yeah. So I, I'm curious to like, there had to have been like a. If it was under a certain amount, because if you just let go of everybody who's in jail just for, for when you were in the in the when you were in the what does it say, Doug? It's think? for it's for use and uh, yeah, use and simple possession. Yeah, so not distribution. Okay. So if you're Correct. a dealer, okay, yeah, yeah you're. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say because that <laughs> that would like clear a lot of people. You know, there's a lot of people in there for what for, was the law when you were in the space medically legal in California. Yeah, but the federal law was like not it was was it, what was it like if there was X amount if you had X amount th then it was like ten years. Well, or? you well what the federal law could do is they could come after you for what every individual state would do. So like say for example, you knew somebody who was sending a pound of weed from California to Florida. Every single oh they uh, fly over they fly over you are you could be held to the maximum penalty of that and state. And then they get added up. Yes. Or? No way. Oh, wow. Yes. Yes. This is how stupid our laws are. Yes. I'm not saying that that should be fully legal, but right. y you know, you got child molesters and you got people breaking into houses and shit like yeah. they don't get 35, 50, 100 years. Yeah, I've, I've I, heard of people getting hundreds of years in jail. Oh, for, yeah. 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 That's yeah, the dumbest thing ever. No, it's, it, it was crazy how, and for marijuana of all the things. Too. That's so stupid. Uh, and so there's a lot of people in prison for stuff like that. Yeah, that or they cross state lines with a bunch of it inside their car or something like that. So that there's there's a lot of people. That's why I was like, there's no way they're letting go of people that. No, it's just simple it, possession and, and stuff like that. Which that's even more crazy, yeah. right? Can you imagine like getting caught and you got a couple joints on you or something like that, yeah. and then going well, to prison? Well, how many states are still like Schedule One with it? Uh, like not Texas a ton, is, but there are definitely yeah. some. No, I think Texas now is, is medical. Yeah, I think yeah. it's medical now. If I'm not mistaken, I think Florida is even medical. Okay. But there's some, I think there's a couple states in the South where you're like, uh uh. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's still, there's still places yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. I don't know anymore. There's, I'm not, there's a I'm lot. Not in, on the, there's some don't countries. There. I don't, yeah. I think Singapore might even be one. I'm not sure, but there's some countries that if they test your blood and they find <laughs> THC in there, it's considered possession and you get either executed or life. What? Executed? Yes. What? 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 Yes. That's crazy. There are countries is like it, that. Is it? Isn't Dubai like super strict like that out there? If Dubai finds it in your blood, I think you go to jail for a long ass time. What? what? Yeah. What? what do you? Are you pulled up, Doug? What do you got for me? Well, twenty-seven states and the District of Columbia have decriminalized small amounts of marijuana. Okay. It doesn't give me any specifics on. Uh, so half, basically, the yeah. other ones. But, but I think Dubai is one of those where if they catch you, yeah, then you're somebody got caught in Dubai. Was it ended up in jail? Some of them will actually. They still do public uh, caning. I do feel like too. It's it's at the it's at the discretion of the, the the cop all the time and stuff too, right? So there's there's a lot of it is how it's written up, right? So they can. The reason why I always felt safe doing what we were doing was that I it was me and my my partner uh, business partner like we we had clean records we we you, we did everything that we could. It was we were operating in the gray, obviously. Mm -hmm. But like I did things like I went and got my cultivating license to where I could have up to ninety nine plants. Yeah. I got that to where I could be carrying up to 10 pounds on me. And so, and I would, I had that laminated, I would put it like in a diver's bag. I'd have it on yeah, but there. If somebody wanted to mess with you. Right, right. So like, if you wanted to come get me, like you had the ability, you absolutely, I could have been in huge trouble for a lot of things, but I was leaning on, okay, I'm trying to operate as legitimately as possible. And so if I get nailed, I'm hoping that what's, that what's the sketchiest, like most scared besides the, the I can't say that on air. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't say that. I've heard, heard the story. I can tell you gnarly. people and I know, I know <laughs> stories of people. There's a lot of sketchy, sketchy stuff for sure that I, I had to do. Back what's the, then. what is the statute of limitations on that? Like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, one day, one day oh, I can't wait to hear One day stories. we can do an episode where we talk about it when I can't go to jail for all that stuff. Oh like, yeah. Adam yeah. tells yeah. it all. I don't know. What is that? What, like, what are, what are the laws on, on that? And then I know also, for taxes, it's seven years, right? Huh? I think for taxes, it's seven years, if I'm not mistaken. 
I believe so. They can like they can go back and check your taxes up to seven years. So if it's like eight years ago, you can. You know, it'd be so that. interesting too. It's like how much like 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 who's to say that like our our this is a show, right? So yeah. I'm telling a story, right? So what if I don't can, give away your secret? Right? <laughs> if you need to use that, <laughs> Dude, like how this much guy named Schmadam? How like yeah. how much could you? I uh, I know you, a guy once. Yeah, 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 right. I know a guy who did this. Like, but I mean, there's still there's still lots of shady business going on like that so I mean, for drug offenses uh the prosecution must commence within three years of the offense being committed according oh, to the law i'm good the statute of limitations is in effect as long as you are in the state of california this is california specific oh well, that doesn't count we're well, talking federal well, well federal yeah so you explain that again so you, you might say i heard two things there. i heard yeah. like in california i'm fucked no matter what forever and then no, I, heard- as, I think the statute of limitations is three years in california they have to they have to prosecute you within within three years, three years. oh that's good this is all yeah. Yeah. A long time ago, so we could talk about that. Uh, stuff. Yeah, it looks federally, it looks like it's five years. Mm. Oh, mm. so you're still good? Yeah. Okay. This, the scariest you're thing free man, getting Adam. your money back. That's always a, was a scary thing. Because when you do stuff, like you, no one thinks about that, right? In a, in a situation, in a transaction like that is, is getting the money. Like the money is always the hardest part. It was actually never the marijuana. It was never the cannabis. It was always getting your money. Like- if you send somebody 10 pounds or 20 oh, right. pounds of marijuana, like, uh, imagine how much money you're talking about, sixty to to $100,000 in cash. Well, that's a big pile of money. And nobody, by the way, has bank stacks of hundreds. So it's 20s? like- 20s? Yeah. It's like whatever. It's like any, whatever they can put together. And so how do you how do you get that? How do you pick that up? How do you carry that? Like you're not putting it in a bank anywhere. And so and if this person is not in the same state as you are, like imagine- having to to move that that was always the scariest part in the and then in the in the in the space uh we called that tax right because you just you lose you lose a lot and it's just part of the it's oh, just people lose money yeah so even that. though you're running a business that's cash in in black market or gray market you still, you still gotta pay somebody you still gotta pay your taxes and uh, that's kind of how you would talk about it is just that like Oh, I paid my tax. I lost $30,000 this week because oh. somebody stole it or got nabbed or whatever the case may be. So, oh, that makes sense. But you don't think about that stuff. You don't think about the you – know, you're, people are so eager to make the money and you're so focused on that. But then it's like, oh, shit, like how do I actually get that money to me? Mm-hmm. And then once it finally gets to me, what can I actually do with that? You like, can't do much. Yeah. You, if you, if go, you go buy something over you, 10, you know, nine 10, grand, 15, nine oh, grand. Okay. So anything over nine grand will trigger an automatic flag. So you can't walk in anywhere and buy anything you can't over go buy nine a, grand. A, a car with cash. You can't put more than nine grand into your bank account at one time without it triggering all these things. So it's like, what do you, what do you do? Well, then it's, it sounds like a good problem to have, but you know, you'll never starve, but then it's like, you can't really make any real moves. And, the, and we structure society in a way that it does not benefit the the cash rich person at all. Like it's we're about credit, mm. you know. Where it's like it's all about having good credit. And if you don't, if you're not in the system and you're not paying all these high taxes, like you could have all the cash in the world, but you can't even go buy like a suburban home, you know, because you don't have any way to prove you can pay for that loan, and you certainly can't go take yeah. all that cash. God, there. That's so. interesting. Speaking of marijuana, you guys see uh, <laughs> Pearl Jam's coming out with a new album. What? Yeah. For real? Yeah. A real one? Or is it yeah. like a remake of the greatest hits? Or no. Is, Brand like, new. Brand no new. Way. And they're releasing oh. like in a, I don't know, a week or two, like a, a single off of it. They're the greatest I'm excited. Band. They're the greatest band. Are they the all Spirit. still together too? There's No one's broken up from it? I think you know? so. I think, I think, I don't know if anybody's died. Interesting play. Have you like dove into like why now and what the, what the deal? I mean, is that, I mean, they've still been touring and the, the thing is like, I've, I've been trying so hard to get tickets to go to a show. I've never been. And they came here to the Bay Area, and it was like you had to be on a waiting list and follow them yeah. to, to even get a time period to like try and get a ticket. Wow. And like we, we just never made it. So. They're for, they're the best, in my opinion. The best. They're awesome. They're the lot. best band of the '90s. Period. Yeah, that's my that's my hundred percent. It is opinion. sad because it's like they're like one of the remaining. Oh my god, I didn't even know they did. I didn't know they did an, a new album in 2020. So Eddie Vedder still still in it too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't know they did a uh, new it's album in 2020. Did so you know far. that? Really? No, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't even know, know they did. Yeah. They did another one? Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't wait. But I mean, hear. every other band, it's like their their front man died, you know? Like, they were like one of the few <laughs> grunge oh, bands you know left. What the, you know what the name is going to be? What? Uh, Dark Matter. Yeah. Okay. All right. It's on April 19th. So yeah. April 19th, it's, spo- it's you, supposed to drop. Speaking of things that are coming out. Did did you guys like the movie I Am Legend back when it yeah. came out? One of the better zombie movies. Yeah, right? yeah, right. Yeah, you I, you I didn't like it that much. I thought, I thought Are you a zombie genre? Do you like yeah, zombie yeah, genre? Yeah, I like genre. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, was it 48 days later? That was freaky. That's the one that that changed the the, the course of zombie movies. Is that zombie the, movies is, got is that a Rob, Isn't that a Rob Zombie movie? Is that Rob Zombie who That's did not, that? No. It's, which yeah, one did he do? He did. Oh, oh he, he did. did. The, uh, you don't want to watch his shit. <laughs> That's too much. That's yeah, what I thought it was. Which one did he do? He did the Thousand Corpses. Yeah. Or, uh, oh, right. Oh, that House one? of a Thousand Corpses. Yeah, yeah, something like that. His movies, I, I, it's like too much. Like you watch it, like Super this is. Gory. I feel like I don't feel good. This is not good. But is it 48 Days Later or 28 Days Later? What's it oh, called? Oh, 28 Days. It must so, have been a follow-up. Yeah, because zombie movies got super campy for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Part two. Sorry, <laughs> Part two. 48 Days Later. Six minute abs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, no, because you know, zombie movies were, remember when we were kids, they were stupid because zombies were slow and everybody made fun of them. Yeah. Then they came out with, I think it's 28 Days Later, and they were fast and aggressive and scary, and it totally changed. So I Am Legend was, so anyway, I Am Legend 2 was coming out. Oh, really? Yeah, dude. But like Will Smith was in the last one. Is he going to be in this he one? He is. I don't even remember uh, how that one ended. Do we forgive Will Smith yet? Is At it- the very end, it looks like he commits suicide to take out a bunch of them. So obviously he survived or whatever. I think, um, right? Am I, is that the ending of it? Never saw it. I think, oh, you never saw it's it. so good, Doug watches good, good films. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a good movie. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> I mean, it was all right. Like, I, I'm not into that stuff at all. Oh, yeah, you I, get scared. I, yeah. That's right. What was yeah, that? I, I forgot. The, the one series that um, it it was it was a video game series that, that they had uh, fungus was was the cause oh, of- Oh, that was good. Everybody I becoming that. zombies- it was a cord- it was cordyceps. Cordyceps. Yeah. I take that every day. Oh yeah, what was the? You guys were all excited about. Uh, I liked the idea of that. Like last the year, there was like a yeah. like a zombie thing like yeah. that that you guys were. It was all, actually really yeah. smart. It was really smart. So what happened? You guys talk about one time, talking about how amazing it was. It, was we never heard it, was, it wasn't like uh, something I'm like jumping up and down. Oh, and so you went through the whole I, season? Yeah, I saw the whole thing. I, I watched like half the season and then I didn't, I didn't finish it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how can you talk about something about how you like it so much and then you can't even finish the it season? It was a great. It was a great. Like, that season. should be a rule for now on. <laughs> huh? I don't want to hear shit from you guys Why? until you've watched a full season of something. Why? Yeah, but because what about it's like the concept was like it's a reputation. Like we're gonna get known as like a terrible podcast for recommending <laughs> shows no, because no, of you guys. Not, dude. You guys are like one episode. You're like, this is amazing. Go yeah. watch this, guys. I'm like, oh, I didn't uh, even finish. It the was season. good. It was good. It got good ratings. Was, uh, everybody good. liked the creator I was promoting. I, I got good I feedback just, on that. I liked the premise. I thought it was a smart. I it got some one of the good smartest ones because every oh. hey, Netflix what is it? called uh, Lo- Lover Stalker Killer. Okay, so it's uh, based on a true story. It's really good. I know Courtney will like it because I know she yeah, likes she loves like, murder, thriller, murder, yeah. like mystery. And it was like Seriously? one of the story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's it. And it's what do they what do they call that when they reenact it or whatever a, a docu- docudrama? Yeah, perhaps. something like that, yeah, right? So sure. it's like they they hire actors, but then the then so they tell the story, but they yeah, but the, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The inter- they're interviewing the real people, right? So you're getting to see them and them they like narrate the story, but then there's people acting out like the the whatever happened. But it was one that uh, I can't remember the last time I saw a true story where the, a true crime story where I'm watching it and I can't figure it out as I'm going through it. Like, th- was that good? Was that mm. good? Where like until the end, you're like, get the fuck out. Really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then you hear, right, they open it up with the with the the cops and the agents of that saying like, this so- was the most twisted like story I've ever, we've ever had a case we've ever had to solve. Mm. So it's really, it's really interesting. And what's even more interesting about it is that it may never have gotten solved had another group of agents picked it up years later. Really? Yes. How God, can you imagine being a woman trying to date online nowadays? <laughs> like what what like how do you know? You have no idea. Bro, yeah, you're gonna let's meet hey, up for lunch. This no, is a how about dude. if I don't? This is a dude getting stalked. What? Yes. What? That's what makes it even more interesting. Does too. he get killed? I'm not gonna say I'm not oh, gonna say how it goes girl. down. Watch it. You guys will like it. It's oh good. yeah, just as like another dude stalked him because that <laughs> yeah, happens. No. Just, as a girl. No, yeah, it's a girl. That's not wow. spoiling anything. Well, that's like, like Fatal Attraction. Remember Fatal Attraction? I mean, it's that's rare, though. You got to watch it. You got to watch it. And it also, too, it's like it, it it's intertwined with the, you know, the online, you know, plenty of fish and dating online type of stuff, too. So it makes you kind of your wheels spin a little bit so on weird. that. So. I, want, I wanted to uh, mention something because I just experienced uh, this again. We've talked about this before. You're out of mentions today. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> you want to go ahead and say it? <laughs> so, uh, um, for a while there, I was eating store bought um, beef and red meat, and I I didn't piece it together. Although this has happened a couple times, and I was getting more inflamed because I eat so much red meat. And then I went back to the grass fed from Butcher Box. Big difference. It makes a big difference if you eat a lot of meat. It makes yeah. a huge difference, and I can feel it in my my body and my joints and everything that I. Well, I think I especially somebody like you, because out of all of us, you probably eat the most red meat. 
Like uh, you, you're every day. You would, wouldn't you I'm say? I'm probably a pound yeah, a day. A, that's a lot. It's yeah, a, yeah. Every day. I, I'd probably match that. Justin's, yeah, yeah. Justin's up there. I'm a big beef eater. Yeah. yeah that's, <laughs> I wonder, maybe, that sounds weird. I don't know maybe that's why you're so puffy. You think you're just inflamed all the no, time? No. What are you talking about? Yeah, I eat high grade <laughs> <laughs> butcher box meat. Dude. He's all this, this is a body fat. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> just some swelling. <laughs> Actually, I've had a lot of people tell me. I told me. Like, it looks like no, bro, you look puffy in the face. I told you that's it. It's always when I feel insecure myself. Adam always comes to you when he's feeling bad yeah, yeah. about yeah. himself. Yeah, yeah. And and I everybody I knows. I felt, yeah. Every time we pass bring, an ice cream I, I, shop, he's like, hey, I bring him in. You know, on, <laughs> like, dude, hey, bro, uh, our, our faces look hella fat lately. You yeah, notice that? Our? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah, he does that all the time. I feel like we're losing muscle. Still, Can you tell? Hey, I still get messages from that interview we did with where I you know, looked Peterson? like, bro, it's because we were in London. Fat I was angles, eating, fat angles. I was eating hella gluten and whatever. And I looked at that. I, I think, think that was more just. Why does my face look so big? It was a camera. It was a camera. No, it wasn't, dude. My face was that big. It, it was. was. Oh, yeah. I was like, no, yeah. I look like I look Charlie like, Brown. Like a little kid. Like, <laughs> like, like, a, big old. like a planet. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was What's that one cartoon that kids watch? I just remember Ryan. I hate it. it. Looks like the. Uh, is it? Oh. The kid's bald. It looks like a. Kid. <laughs> Does it look like he's well? Caillou. So, yes. Uh, annoying. What is that? Caillou. Caillou. Dude. You ever watch Caillou? No, I've never heard of that. Stupid. It's the most annoying cartoon ever made. It's the stupidest, most annoying cartoon of all time. Oh, really? Yeah, and it's like this big bald kid. Like you know, we think about it. Something's wrong with that kid. Why is he? Yeah. Was he, and maybe there was something, and so now we're assholes. Yeah. You know? Matt, I tell you, what, I'd, I've probably been the most lenient on the iPad and TV lately because Max has fallen in love with this numbers. Oh, well, he's just learning like crazy. Yes. Like Let him doing, learn. He doesn't even know it. He's doing multiplication. <laughs> I'm like, oh my, he does, because he's just singing the songs that are in the show and stuff. And I'm like, That's okay. Awesome. Yeah. I was like, it's not often like I'm dad's super pro Dude. watching cartoons, but this cartoon is like teaching him math and it's brilliant. So right? I told you, we told that my son, the TV's broken, right? Yeah. So like the TV's broken, but he still tries and he's like, well, let's do this. Let's do the iPad. Yeah. So I just, you know, every once in a while you see a trait of yourself and your kid and your ego just puffs up a little bit. Right. So he goes up to, he goes up to Jessica and he goes, and he does this with his hands. He goes, so mom, what are those videos called where <laughs> you learn from them? She's yeah. like, educational? He goes, yeah. yeah. Can I watch an educational video? I'm in the kitchen. I'm dying. Like, he's trying to sell yeah. his mom. Oh, I'm watching little, something. Little by salesman saying, in action. Oh, yeah. I was yeah. thinking it was pride, you know? I, I, told, I told her, I said, let him have this one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> let him, let let him win, have it. Let dude. him win sometimes. Yeah, let him win pitch. a little bit because that was a good. That yeah, was, that was for good. a three year old. That was good. Educational. Right, right, yeah, right. Dude. I, it's more on the way here. Yeah. Like we, Katrina texted me. She said like, Max caught her off guard because she was telling him. I guess uh, the last couple of days at school, he hasn't been eating his lunch, and so uh, she's telling him before the, she's dropping him off. Hey, today you need to make sure you eat your lunch. I saw you didn't eat your lunch. And he goes, Why? What will happen? And she was like, oops. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she had to like think about it. Like, what, yeah, what am I going to do if you don't do that? <laughs> right. Yeah. She said, I was so caught off guard. Yeah. She said, the best thing I come up with was like, well, lot, then you won't be able to have yeah. any of your snacks. And it was like, okay, that made sense. Uh, that was logical. But she's like, yeah, he's now at that age where we're starting to challenge things like that. And you better be on your toes to be able to explain it. I, that, that was something, a commitment uh, I've made myself is that I don't ever want to default to because daddy told That's you right. so. Like I always want, and it's hard because they catch you off guard like well, that. Well, not so. just that. You just want them to do what you want. Right. You know, but right. really you want them to do it because they understand That's they right. want to, not because of you. That's right. Yeah. And I, I think that as parents, it's it's really easy to default because I'm dad and yeah. I said so. Do what and I it's, said. Yeah. And it's like, That's how no. I grew up. So I, I, I challenge mm -hmm. myself to like in those moments, like, you know, and it can be obviously a pain in the ass because it goes deeper and deeper, right? Why, 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 mm -hmm. why? And it's like, yeah, but I want to be able to explain the logic of why I'm telling you or making you do these things, not simply because dad told you so. And so it's always funny though, when they, he catches you off guard because you're not always ready for the why or what will happen or whatever. It's like this. This is how I heard it communicate. Cause I grew up like that. I grew up like you just, this way. I, I think all you, of us did. You just do, that yeah. was like our generation was. Yeah, most was, people. Yeah. Right? And, and it gets the job done is what it does. But the way I was, it was explained to me where it made sense. It's like, do you not rob a bank because you're afraid of going to jail or because it's wrong? Right. There's a big difference. I was right. like, oh, okay. I can see that. Yeah, and I also, I mean, I want my son to be able to challenge authority intelligently. Yes, right. Yes, and so just because he's going to be told to do a lot that's of right. shit. So I don't yeah. want, I don't want because I'm the authority in the house, and I told you so. You have to just listen to authority. I'm pretty sure with your genetics, he's going to question. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure he's going to do whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, he's already, he's already doing that. The hardest thing for me right now is he's, he's so, he's a, he's a very sensitive kid. Like so, like that's the, the challenge right now is like. 
you know, his, he is, he will default to like crying like that. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, like someone takes something from him like that right now we're having to work with that. Like if when other kids either bully or take stuff like that, it's teaching him how to stand up for himself yeah. and not just come cry. Like, no, 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 no. Don't, we don't punch him in the face. That's right. <laughs> yes, it's, it's, <laughs> push him down when he's in the sandbox. Push him down. <laughs> it feels better than crying. No, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. But that, sure. that I can tell already, like that yeah. will be, that'll be our challenge is, you know, he, he'll, he'll default. He's such a sweet kid that he defaults to the, the crying over something like that. Yeah. And it's like, I'm trying to get him to, no, 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 no we don't cry over that. My, Let's use our words. My, my son and my brother's son, they'll get together and they'll fight with each other 60% of the time. And then 40% of the time they'll play with each other. But when they fight, it is hilarious. So we got to separate them. We gotta, uh, then they'll take one toy and then, but they, I, they were together a few weeks ago and my, my son took something from him. My brother's son took it back. So Aurelius hits him, right? So he holds his face. We separate them. Okay. Mm -hmm. 40 minutes later. Okay. 40 minutes later, they're leaving to say goodbye, say goodbye to each other. And they walk up to each other. And you know, my, my, my nephew, Angelo looks at my, and he remember, he looked at him, boom, hit him back. And no, <laughs> right oh before he left. My brother and I were like, oh no, we're oh cracking up. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my yeah, God. So do the, okay. So in this but situation, I mean, so like, do, do, the, do the wives freak out? Uh, the, so no, like, they're really good. Okay. Everybody. Yeah. Calm. They're really good about it. And you know, like, you know, if he hits the other kid, you go and take care of the other kid first to show them like, Hey, this yeah. isn't, are you okay? And yeah. then, Hey, you, if you do that, I'm not gonna let you do that. You can't do that anymore yeah. type of deal, but they're going to do that. When I was a kid, my, oh my God, my, my cousins and I used to fight all the time oh yeah all the time it yeah. was well, you have i mean it was royal rumble you have like, melee you have uh what we just explained the the extreme opposites of the spectrum right you have your son who's like quick to defend himself yeah. like <laughs> take my shit you know yeah. what i'm saying and you have my son who's going to default and go to crying it's like and you want something in the middle right yeah. you want him to be they have able to learn to, right you yeah. want him to be able to stand up for himself but then also not just resort to yeah. violence or they learn know. to rate it's what's yeah. called right. self-regulation right is what they're learning is how to how to self-regulate you right. know type right. of deal so right. but anyway watching it's kind of funny especially my brother and i because we're just cracking up <laughs> <on the side laughs> yeah. what are we uh what are we shouting out are we gonna shout out the the certification that's happening here the, I would say so. Let's. What's uh, the dates on that? You talking about shallows? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Prescript. He'll be doing. He'll be hosting it here at Mind Pump, and uh, Jordan Shallow, one of the smartest people in our space. Period. End of story. Now, what and he also is like he walks the walk. The dude isn't just a a, a scholar. He's also a power lifter and trains athletes. No, and, he's brilliant. Yeah, he's amazing. What? Okay, what are we doing though for our audience? I know that if <clears throat> the first is it ten. So the first 10 can actually come into the studio and watch a recording. Okay. And then everybody else will have a Q&A &A session with us. Okay. I can meet and greet as well. This and, is what uh, the day before. Swag bag. So on Friday. So what we're doing So March is 15th is the Q&A, it says here. Uh, and then it says 16th and 17th. Which I think is Saturday and Sunday. Okay. So if I believe, if this is correct- That's correct. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So- and that's, so everybody, if you sign up for this and you're, you come to the thing with Jordan, you have the option to come a day early- hang out with us here. Mm -hmm. We'll do we'll do a live Q&A &A for I don't know how many hours that Katrina's blocked off for us. The first 10 people to sign up for this like right now will have the opportunity to watch a live recording also. Awesome. And, and you go to it's pre-script.com forward slash mind dash pump dash PS is that L? L1. One. Yes, L1. They need a better... Uh, up, up, down, work down, left, him right, select links. A, B, start. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It'll be in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, it's in the show notes, so check it out. Yeah, refer to that. <laughs> At this point, you've probably heard that probiotics can greatly improve your health. It's true. The right probiotics can make a difference with gut health, brain health, and some studies shown to reduce anxiety and even depression. Most people notice an improvement in their skin and their digestive system. Well, anyway, there's a company called Seed. They make the world's best probiotic hands down. These are the world's leading researchers that have constructed this company. This is a probiotic that actually delivers. So if you've tried probiotics, Try Seed. This one will blow you away. Anyway, go to seed.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code 25 mind pump and get 25% off your first month's order of Seed's daily symbiotic. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Daniel from Switzerland. Daniel, what's up? What's going on? Hey, guys. How are you doing, oh man? Oh, my God. That's, this is a surreal moment. Right. It's crazy. <laughs> How can we help you? Nice to see you. Thank you. All right, so I'm just going to jump in my uh, on my question, the email I wrote. So I love the podcast and really appreciate what you guys do. 
so I'm 38 years old. I live in Switzerland. I've been training on and off for the past few years, but now I'm very consistent since December 2021. And I'm going to the gym five times a week, Monday to Friday. After work, I follow a body split, uh, body part split program. And visually, I sent in some pictures. I think I may be at 17 or 18 percent body fat. Could be more. Um, I look and feel great compared to what I was in my 20s. Um, I'm 38 now, as I said, and I feel that maybe I should start uh, TRT. I do have low energy levels, but I haven't uh, test. Well, when I sent this email, uh, I didn't get tested because it's a bit difficult to get tested here in Switzerland. But I finally uh, convinced my doctor to test, and uh, I came back at uh, 377. Um, I'm really in it. Uh, if I want to go into TRT for losing uh, body fat, ma mainly aesthetics, I can finally see my abs. So I really like that. Uh, but I would like to look more into, you know, sh getting shredded and more ripped. I'm leaning towards uh, your uh, either maps anabolic or aesthetics. But when I sent in this question, uh, I was thinking about, ba about that. But um, I ended up buying aesthetics in your um, Black Friday sale. So I'm at phase three right now. Um, but yeah, I just would love to hear uh, about TRT, and uh, but I also think that seems like a lifelong uh, solution. And also, very quickly, I'm a short guy. I'm five feet, four inches, so I have small wrists. Uh, I do uh, dumbbell bench press. Um, uh, with 34 kilograms uh, each dumbbell, but getting the dumbbell from the rack to the bench is a struggle. How do I improve my uh, grip strength? Okay. All right. Let's start with the testosterone. So what would be cl clinically labeled as low testosterone would be below 300 uh, nano, I think it's, what is it? Nanograms per nanoliter. I don't know what the nanograms per deciliter. Sorry. So you're, you're on the cusp, right? If you're suffering from symptoms yeah. of low testosterone and you're on the line, then you would want to talk to a hormone specialist that does this and see if they'll, if they'll work with you. The typical, uh, general practitioner will go right off of the, what their, what, what their numbers say, which is they typically won't give a man testosterone, especially if he's in child, uh, you know, like infertility years, right? Years where you're going to want to have a child. If you don't have kids, they're going to be very reluctant to put you on testosterone because it can make it so that you can't have kids um, unless your testosterone is like below 300, right? Um, but you're on the line. You've got symptoms of low testosterone. There's lots of things that people can do with their lifestyle to raise their testosterone. I've seen some quite successful changes with people, but you'd want to work with a hormone specialist um, who does this. And, and, and typically what they'll do is they'll base it off of the number and symptoms. So it's a combination of both. So like someone who's, you know, 400, uh, but they have symptoms of low testosterone, they'll get put on TRT or somebody who's at 400 and has, and feels perfectly fine. They won't be put on TRT. So it's a combination of things when you speak to the actual, um, specialist, as far as grips strength is concerned, you would want to do a, you know, maybe one or two sets of, of specific great grip strengthening exercises, when you work out, maybe your back or your biceps is typically a good combination. So like a set of a dumbbell hold or a farmer walk um, is usually enough to speed up the process of strengthening the grip. And then using chalk typically helps. And if you work out in a gym that doesn't allow using chalk, then you can use liquid chalk, which most gyms are totally fine with. What is what is the rest of your your day slash life look like? Right? What do you do for work? And, you know, uh, what's your sleep routine like? And do you have like normal hours? Like, tell me a little bit about like your, like your routine and your, your daily life. So, uh, I'm, I'm, a, an accountant, so I have a very, uh, sad, no, I'm just joking. Very, um, <laughs> desk job. I, um, I sit on my on the desk eight hours. Okay. Um, my sleep is really bad. Um, I have I was diagnosed with sleep apnea, and I have the CPAP machine, mm -hmm. which which is just a nightmare to to be on the whole night. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a six year old who comes at about three o'clock at night uh, in our bed, and then one of us, which is really me, 
have to go uh, in the <laughs> guest room and I'm not gonna, you know, take my machine with me at three o'clock at night. So uh, after that, sleep is just uh, is really bad, and 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 I and I believe that that may be one of the causes of my low oh yeah. T. Oh yeah. yeah, oh yeah, probably the major yeah. one. Yeah, you 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 could. I mean, fixing your sleep could could raise your testosterone yeah. by 50, 60 percent. I want to put you well in a nice range. I want to send you a different program of ours too, because I don't think Maps Aesthetic is the most appropriate for what you no got way. going on right yeah, now. So no. I would do Maps Anabolic. So okay. we're gonna. I'll send. I'll send Maps. Or Maps Ana 15, 15. Yeah, Maps Anabolic or Maps fifteen. Either one are fine. I'm gonna send you Maps Anabolic just because that's our foundational program, and I think that between that and really solving the the bad thing is is going to or like sleep is going to be uh huge and i don't know if that means uh before getting it interrupted you move your stuff into the other room and you actually start the night out sleeping in the in the guest room i know obviously for marriage that's not always the most ideal situation but you know maybe maybe you guys hang out and then right before she falls asleep that's when you kind of cut out and then go to the other room just because you know that's going to happen to you because getting your sleep disrupted every night like that and then not being able to have your machine that helps you get into deep sleep oh, yeah. is 100% affecting your hormone levels i mean mm. that's probably the main reason why you feel tired or slash weak and that your tr and your uh, testosterone levels are low and so solving that while simultaneously scaling back on the volume in your training, those two things alone should you, sh you should see positive benefits in the building muscle leaning out direction for sure. Totally, yeah. Uh, you you, you got to train appropriately and fix your sleep. I've seen a person's testosterone double just from fixing their sleep. I, I, I mean, I've had yeah, yeah um, especially when it's low. I like my routine of going to the gym five times a week, like the work week, so that I have a routine. And I and if I miss one day, I just feel so bad. Is is there a version of anabolic in which maybe I can split something so I'm going yeah. every yeah. day? You can, yeah. or you could go to the gym and do and walk and do some mobility. I mean, you can still take that time for yourself, but just yeah. too much volume, especially with crappy sleep, is gonna. I mean, you're not helping yourself. You're gonna there's, hurt yourself. There's two ways you could do that. You yeah. can cut anabolic in half and literally make it into a six day routine. Okay, so that's right. what you could cut the workout in half like yeah. that and make it a six day routine. Or you can do what Sal's alluding to, which is you still train the three full days, but then on the other days you go to the gym, you're walking, you're stretching, maybe doing some yeah. sauna, yeah. meditating. You're doing things that Trigger are more sessions. recuperative for your body on the other day. So either one of those ways uh, would be better. And any of the, either one of those options is a better option than MAPS Aesthetic for where you're currently at right now. MAPS Aesthetic is one of our highest volume training programs. And I know it, 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 it. Obviously, a lot of people are are drawn to it because it is the program to get you shredded yeah. and lean and aesthetics, and so people are drawn. But we got to first fix your your sleep and your hormone levels because nothing is going to make a bigger difference on you getting ripped more than that. That will show you the progress that you're looking for in your training more than anything else will. So addressing that, I think, is the, the top priority. Yeah, I think I think Maps and Box is a great program for you. However, I do think the Maps Fifteen. Uh, has that structure already built in. So if you wanted to just follow off of that as the the main sort of blueprint, um, you know, that would be my recommendation. I don't know if he's still there or not. Yeah, Daniel, you, we've lost your video. You might have lost him all together. Yeah. Uh, boy, kids are a pain in the ass, I swear. <laughs> my, my, kid, <laughs> my kids, uh, it's just, it's almost like if four or five days a week, there's some kind of disrupted sleep Oh, yeah. from one of them. I'm and still it, dealing with that and he's 11. So, uh, I mean, he'll come in and uh, it'll be like different times of the night because uh, something scared him. And so we actually have this like huge bean bag that now it's like, you know, OK, you know, here's here's the option or or I go put him back to bed. It's uh, like one or the other. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, I obviously I know it's not the most ideal situation for a married couple to sleep in different beds. But there comes a point here where I mean, your your hormone levels are like this. You're tired, like. So I think the move I would do is I'd spend my quality time with my wife, you know, i.e. that we'd have sex, whatever it is. And and then when it's time for her to go to bed or us go to sleep, I would break off and go head to the other room and sleep in the other room. Because the fact that he's got sleep apnea and on top of that, it's getting disrupted. Yeah. is like a, that's like a double whammy for him. 
and getting up in the middle of the night, not moving his machine, and then thinking he's going to fall back and, and have good good sleep. He's just yeah. he's missing Get out on that. Get your spoon in and, and take off. Yeah, that. that's just <laughs> a, and it's so important to recovery. And if you're and then the the program aesthetic is not the right program for him for what he's no going way. through right way, now. Way so too much. Yes, you got to you got to solve that. So I think that that. You know, and, and sometimes that's not what people want to hear because it it's not like a you know that, that's that they think is going to get them the most shredded. But that that is what's going to get yep. you the most shredded yep. is by solving the the sleep issue, and that's probably what I would do. Which is I would just I'd sleep in the other room. Our next caller is Adrian from Maryland. Adrian, how can we help you? Hi, um, sorry, I'm a little nervous. Um, I just wanted to apologize to Doug. My grammar and my email was awful. <laughs> um, <laughs> no worries. So uh, just a little background and then I'll do the question. Okay. Uh, I'm 54. Uh, I was in the army for almost 21 years. So uh, that meant about four to five days a week of running and two days of body weight or calisthenics. Um, I've been retired now for 15 years. And during that time I've run, um, sporadically i've done five k's a couple of 15 k's and some weightlifting videos at home um i gained the retirement 25 pounds the college 15 pounds and the divorce 20 pounds <laughs> so, <I> never, <laughs> that's great, <yeah. laughs> so recently i've uh, also recovered from plantar fasciitis in both of my feet and a pulled muscle behind one of my knees uh, I started lifting consistently about two years ago to help with the knee pain. And so now I feel really good. I don't have any pain. And I've also been working on building muscle and cleaning up my diet. Uh, so now I'm ready to start cutting. Um, I'm at that point where you're always saying, gain some weight. You know, you know, don't worry about losing the weight. Work on building muscle and uh, bulking a little bit. And so now I'm at that part. Um so I worry about retaining muscle as I lose weight. Um, I really like feeling stronger and being mobile. I feel really solid. I stretch and I do the mobility at least once a week. I'm currently doing anabolic events for the second time and I've done anabolic, but I prefer the upper and lower body split. I keep my cardio to less than 20 minutes most days when I do them, uh, mostly walking with intervals, incline or spin bike. And I started running um, intervals just a couple of times a month to um for a little bit of change and plus i enjoy the effects of running so um to lose weight i know i have to lower my calories uh should i concentrate on lifting the same amount of weight that i am now how do i know that my muscles are still adapting and i'm not in the recovery trap and what are some signs that my metabolism is getting better or at least i'm not getting worse do you know how many calories you're con currently consuming, Adrian? Um, uh, be about 21, 2200. Okay. And you're tracking on a regular basis or is this an estimate? Um, I'm trying to. I do really good most days up until, you know, dinner time. And then, um, you know, okay. I might snack a little bit after. So. Okay. So we don't know. We don't know how many calories you're consuming. Yeah. Okay. Have you worked with a, a trainer? A one, is, it, is that feasible for you to hire a trainer or work with somebody? Uh, not right now. Not right now. I can't. Okay. Um, just the cost and um, I don't even know where I would get one right now. Got it. Uh, no. Yeah. No problem. So. Okay. So a couple things based off of your past and what you're currently doing, um, I think you're working out too much and too hard for yourself. Just based off of the information that you're giving me and some of the struggles you're having, the plantar fasciitis, your history in the military, um, you know, how you're talking about your workouts. I don't think anabolic advance is appropriate uh, for okay. you. And I don't think that the intervals are a good idea for you. I think we need to keep you with much lower volume of training, but then with the diet, we need to know specifically where you're at. If it, you know, the, the, the guessing and then kind of cutting it off at dinner, it could be all over the place and people are notoriously I couldn't give you anything within, I'm going to be off by 20% of my calories and I know what I'm doing just if I try to guess where I'm at. And I've had to, I mean, I've done this many, many times to know that um, you're just not going to know where you're at. So we need to know where your calories are at on a consistent basis before we can even attempt to cut. As far as a workout is concerned, <laughs> anabolic is fine. Uh, Mass 15 would probably be even better. You could do the advanced version. 
and then I would track steps, and I wouldn't do anything that's interval based. I I would love. I'll do this for you if you do something for me. So I would love for you to use either Fat Secret or My Fitness Pal to track for a week consistently, not missing anything. I'm gonna have Doug put you in the forum for free, and then if you tra- and then I would also like you to track your steps. If you give me that a week, a week of tracking your food and a week of tracking your and don't, steps, don't change anything. Yeah, don't change anything. Don't try to impress me. Okay, do do what you do, so I know what you what, what's a normal week for you. Mm-hmm. So just do what you normally do, but track it diligently for a week, both steps and what you eat, and then I want you to to post it and tag me in the forum so I can assess it. And then from there, I'll give you even better advice as far as what to do with the calories, what to do with movement. I agree with Sal. Uh, anabolic or symmetry would probably be the program. One of those two programs would be the program I would have pushed you towards. So I think you sh- that's the right choice. But what I'll do is I will give you specific step advice and calorie advice when I get an idea of what a consistent week looks like on what we should do. Because what I don't know, and it would be interesting to see, is – how much your movement in relation to where your calories is if I really want to cut that much right now or do I want to continue to focus on reverse dieting? And then I also want to be able to see how consistent you are with hitting those protein targets every day because for sure if we cut calories and you're missing your protein intake significantly, we're going to lose muscle. And that would be my my number one focus was to make sure that we hang on to any bit of muscle that you've built over the last year or two of training. Do you and, and tracking the macros are going to be really important because if we don't, if we're not sure what your calories are, you're probably not also sure what your protein intake is. Is that correct? Um, I I've been shooting for at least 120, 150 a day, but I I'm probably missing it. Okay, yeah, yeah. we need we need to know. You give me that for a week, and I'm going to be able to give you really yeah, good advice. Yeah. Totally. Do you do you drink alcohol? Do you have how many drinks a week do you have, or do you not? Uh, maybe two drinks a year. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Okay. And I asked that because sometimes people don't add that in their tracking and I've had clients where they, they were tracking, they didn't add that. And then I'm like, Oh, we got to add that. That's another 150, 200 yeah. calories a day type of deal. So you want to track everything, including, including fluids. Don't change anything, be very accurate. And then Adam will be able to give you much better specifics because you know, we could try to give you advice right now, but it's gonna be based off of guessing and it would yeah. be like trying to assess how to fix a car without doing an assessment. Of and I, and I don't want to on. tell you to cut calories right now if that's not the best advice. And, that's right. and I won't know that until I kind of get an idea, a better idea of what you're doing in a, in a regular week. And then from there, I'll give you much better advice on the direction because we might, we might just uh, hang out where you are calorie wise and just make a better uh, effort towards protein intake and give you a better workout routine. Totally. That might, that might right there send us in the right direction. Or maybe you are eating 23 to 2,500 calories and you're hitting plenty of protein and you could easily cut two or 300 calories, increase our steps by a couple thousand and see great fat loss. So let me see that. You give that for me. You do that for me. I'll get Doug, put you in there for free. We'll also send over anabolic to you. So you've got all the, uh, everything you need. And then you let you do that for me, tag me, and then I'll do, I'll tell you what to go from there. Okay. Um, yeah, I already have anabolic. So. Oh, okay. Oh, great. beautiful. Great. Great. We'll put you in the forum then. Okay. Make sure you tag all of us. Okay, Adrian. Okay. A little bit different than I was expecting, but I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, we want to make, I need, that's what I need. I, yeah. Yeah. We want to give you the right answer. Yeah, we don't yeah. want to just, yeah, yeah, give you an answer that's because it, it, you know, we give you the wrong answer. Even if it sounds right on air, we don't want you to go down the wrong path. We so, got totally. you. You're at, you're, you're right. in, you're in the forum. You're in the family. We'll take care of you from here. Well, thank you. All right, Adrian. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Um, sweet. Yeah, yeah. sweetly. Most people do you think she was an alcoholic or something. Why did you say no, that? No, 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 no. <laughs> just because of her age. Oh, that was so just, random. You asked. No, that. no, no. You know why? Because my the the clients that I typically would mess up with that, and it just occurred mm-hmm. to me, were oh, typically people in their in their fifties, and for some reason they, they'd have a glass of wine or something. They wouldn't uh, track it. Uh, yeah. So because you're telling her to track, I'm like, make sure I'm you like, she home. wasn't tracking any of the rest of her food. So yeah, it's like, yeah. yeah. And, and she was a lot track- of those things that sneak in. And- totally, totally. Yeah, yeah, I have a feeling what we're gonna see is uh, this is my guess. Let's see if I'm right. I, I'm thinking she's gonna be uh, low calorie, so she's gonna be in the 2,000 range at the highest, probably in that range. I think she's gonna be missing protein no on most protein, days. Yeah, for sure. And I don't think the advice would be to cut calories quite yet. I think the advice is gonna be yeah. probably keep her calorie around the same but hit protein intake yeah and then move to a better program and then i don't i'm really curious to see what her steps are so i hope she 
rem- and remind her in the email, Doug, for me, please, to track her step. I know I told her that, but I just want to make sure she does that too because that will give me an idea of her activity level because she's retired, right? Is that the, what I got from her? She's, yeah. So she's retired, and if her only activity is the you know a little bit of- uh, Then it's not much. Yes, yeah, exactly. Steady state cardio and lifting, then she might not be burning very much and simply putting her on a walk for you know an hour yeah. a day too could be like game changing for her and too. And I mean, and the other, just one other thing is that it's, it's, it's almost like clockwork where we have someone call in or even send an email and they'll pick a program that one of our programs and it's typically one that's too much volume. Yeah. They almost never go with the appropriate program and based off which the anabolic advanced- I, you know, I'll be surprised if that's the appropriate place for her to start. I think anabolic would be good. Two days a week, the two day a week version. Our next caller is Holly from Minnesota. Hi, Holly. How can we help you? Hi. Hi, guys. It is so exciting to talk to you. I can't even believe I'm doing this today. So thank you so much for taking my question. And like everyone says, I just want to pass on my gratitude to you guys for all that you do in this space. As you know, the Health and fitness space can have some really interesting and toxic perspectives. And I just want to thank you guys for all the positive stuff you put out there. It's been transformative in my life. And I just want you to know how much of a difference you make. Thank Thank you, you, Holly. So, yeah, I'll just get right into my question. Um, I'm going to read it so I don't get sidetracked. I do that sometimes. So my overarching question to you guys is I know you guys get frustrated when the science crowd knocks reverse dieting. So I'm curious what you'd advise people when they try it and it doesn't seem like it works for them. Are there limits to reverse dieting and what are they? Are some people just not good candidates for it? I hear people talk about reverse dieting like it's as simple as eating slightly more over time and training to build muscle. But when I tried it, something just didn't really seem to click for me. So just a little bit of background. For most of my fitness journey, I was an intuitive eater and I had a lot of success with that. I dropped 12% body fat and gained lots of muscle over the course of a couple of years, cycling through as many MAPS programs as I could and just eating whole natural foods about 90% of the time. And then the reason I decided to try a reverse diet was not really because I was unhappy with how things were going, but really because I've never done a true bulk before. I was wondering what I might have been leaving on the table and wondering if a higher metabolism was possible. And I think there was part of me that just wanted to chase a goal again. I also really love food. So anything that gets me to eat more food, I'm all about it. I didn't know my exact maintenance calories since I was intuitively eating. But when I got the idea to try this reverse dieting thing, I prepared for it in advance by signing up for a macro coaching app that has an algorithm to estimate my calorie expenditure based on my nutrition info that I input and a graph of my weight trend. I used that app for several months before starting and I found my maintenance range to be about 2,200 to 2,300 calories. So with that info in September, I started the process with Anabolic Advanced. I started weighing 130 pounds, I'm 5'2", and about 20% body fat. I added an extra 60 to 80 calories a day to start. And the first two to three weeks actually went pretty well. I didn't gain anything and maybe even dropped a pound. So I was feeling pretty excited. So then I added another 60 calories or so. But this time the weight seemed to come on really fast and almost make up for what I didn't gain for in the first few weeks. I tried to give it some time to level out, but I was watching my weight trend graph in the app and it was just still steadily climbing up and not really leveling out. It just seemed like I was kind of in a full on bulk, not a reverse diet. And I noticed my appetite spiked like crazy too. I was just super hungry all the time during that time. So I was hoping maybe it was a good sign. I was putting on some muscle, but when I did my circumference measurements, I did put on about an inch on my waist as well. So I'm just kind of interested in your thoughts on what maybe I did wrong or what I'm not understanding about the process. Let's get more specific. You yeah, said yeah. your weight was coming on fast. I'm not sure you did anything with wrong. With extra 60 calories a day, how what how much weight are we talking? Um. So when it started coming back up, it was probably about a pound a week. Okay, so a pound a week. Yeah, just, I, I think you were probably doing great. Yeah, you're doing good. Also, a pound a week um, at 60 pounds surplus, something was off there, and we'd want to get more of an accurate measurement. 
okay? Because water fluctuations can more than make up for that, especially with a woman, okay? Women will see water fluctuations much more than men typically will because of hormonal changes. Body fat testing and trending with body fat tests is a better gauge than even circumference measurements. Even circumference measurements around the waist can be misleading, especially again with women with water gain, water drop, and all that, or, you know, it could be digestive stuff. You can see a swing in the waist by two inches uh, sometimes. So it's really tough to say. I think it's also important to note something that you commented on that is normally a sign that we're doing things really well, which is that's the increase in, in appetite. Like that's a that's typically a, means a good that's thing. That's normally yeah. a good sign. That's normally meaning that your metabolism is starting to speed up and your body's trying to tell you we need yeah. to feed it even more calories. What was going on with your strength in the gym? Uh, were you saying the same? Were you getting stronger? How were your lifts? Oh, it was, it was really good. I was doing anabolic yeah. advanced and, um, like I, since I had been doing mostly intuitive eating, I was used to getting stronger, but then when I started actually intentionally trying to eat more, I was amazed at how much faster the needle moved that yeah. way. So that was, that was exciting. You were, I, I you were going in the right direction. I think yeah. you were doing great. I literally, if you were my client and we were going through this, I would just be kind of coaching you on just be patient. Let's yeah. just stay the course right now. Uh, even if you think that a pound a week is, I mean, a pound a week every week for, you know, 10 weeks straight, maybe we were to back off, but a pound a week just for a few weeks in a row. Uh, I'm not really worried yeah. about that at all. I mean, it's and that's how transitional, my, especially that if you were giving me feedback that I'm getting stronger and my appetite yeah. is up. If and you didn't give me those cues and muscle gain is almost always in short spurts. It's never like I gain this consistent amount of muscle over time. It's almost like. I get stronger, I get stronger, I get stronger, I get stronger, and then boom, three pounds of muscle. And then I get stronger. So it's all, it's, it's, it, you grow in spurts with muscle. It's not mm -hmm. this like consistent uh, kind of gain. And because your strength went up, your energy, was it good? Did you feel good? Was your sleep good? How, how did you feel otherwise? Yeah. Yeah, I actually like I was having a lot of fun with it at first, but then, you know, I don't really care so much about the number on the scale, but I will admit when I saw my waist measurements going up that I that really kind of disturbed me a little yeah. bit and that kind of took some of the, the fun out of it. The and biggest the yeah. biggest hurdle for reverse dieting uh is always mental. Always yeah. mental. And it's 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 always something like that. Like I feel good, I'm stronger. Oh my god, I got good energy. And then they'll do some kind of a measurement or something like that, or they'll put something on and then it'll freak them out. And it's, uh oh, I got to, I mean, look, a 60 calorie surplus, you wouldn't even be able to gain a pound of body fat in a week with a 60 calorie surplus. It would almost food, be impossible. Do you have any food intolerances or any kind of gut issues by any chance? No, I don't have any gut issues and um, no food intolerances that have, that, you know, I've ever really noticed or anything. Yeah. My, I mean, do you, and here's the other thing to do with circumference measurement, measure it first time in the morning and be consistent with it. Also, um, a, a waist measurement can change and fluctuate pretty huge from morning to evening, yeah. but I like body fat testing, but even body fat testing can be off from test to test. You want to look at the general trend, but really mm -hmm. pay attention more to how you feel yeah. than anything. Like, how do I f feel? How's my performance in the gym? Am I stiff? Do I have more energy? Am I stronger? Um, I mean, I've had female clients gain seven pounds on the scale, um, not know it because I don't let them see it, and then have comments from family members that they look like they lost weight. Yep. So I and, mean, uh, Holly, I think you were doing great. Yeah, I really think you were. You, I think you did a, a a perfect amount of adding back in. I mean, all the signs. So what I when I when I'm like looking at the the scale, the circumference, or even body fat percentage, the only real reason why I want to know that is I just want those numbers in addition to hearing what you have to say to me. Like right. if you told me Adam, I'm, I'm not feeling any better, you know, like I'm not stronger. It's hard for me to eat this yeah. food. I don't feel stronger. And, and then on top of that, I'm seeing the numbers aren't moving in the direction positively for us. Okay. I might readjust our plan. But if you're telling me, oh my God, Adam, I feel good. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm hungry. And you're like, well, the strength gains are coming on. I don't even give a shit about and those. It was such I don't even care about those other numbers right yeah. now. I'm like, stay the course. We're going to keep yeah. listening to this body until I start to see something that either jumps out at me that I need to reverse course. But what I'm hearing from you is like, well, this is working and this is heading the right yeah, direction. Holly, and that's such a small quote unquote surplus. Your metabolism can fluctuate more than that on its own. Like 60 mm -hmm. calorie surplus, I wouldn't even necessarily count it as a surplus because 
Your measurement could be off by 5% with your food. You could weigh your food a little off, and that'll be over 60 calories. Yeah. Even if yeah. you look at how much, how many excess calories are required to turn into a pound of body fat, that would not turn into a pound of body fat. Or I would think it would take something like three weeks yeah. at an actual mm -hmm. surplus of 60 calories to turn into one pound uh, of body fat. So I think you kind of got in your head a little bit and you're already uh -huh. strong. You said, and now the first question was, can, is there a limit to reverse that? Well, of course, like you're not going to get your metabolism to burn, you know, 10,000 calories a day, but I don't think you're anywhere near, no. you know, I don't think you're near that. I think you're perfectly fine. Your calories are in the low two thousands. You're five, two, it says here, your body fat's around 20%. You're, you're, you're saying you're pretty muscular already. So are you identifying that you've got good muscle development? Um, I mean, how much strength did you, did you see go up during that period? Would you mind giving me some numbers or some kind of context? Um, yeah, I, so after I finished anabolic advance, I was actually going to do a power lifting meet at my gym, just like a local, um, low key one. I actually ended up being sick and couldn't participate, but I was for a few weeks leading up to it. I worked with a trainer to kind of test what I should aim for, for when I go into that powerlifting meet. And I was able to squat about 215. I was about 255 for deadlift and for bench, I was about 140. Yeah, that's great. great. What did you start? Yeah. Where did, where did those numbers start? How much did that improve when you, when you started this? Well, the last time I had tried to do a squat, like a peak squat, I was about 200, I okay. think. So 15 pound increase in your squat. That's phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, and what about your deadlift and your and your bench press? Deadlift has always been a tricky one. I've injured myself a few okay. times. Now I think I have my form down really well on that. But prior to this, I think the last time I tried to get close to top on deadlift was probably about 240. Okay. And then bench, I think, was about 135. Yeah, so like 15-pound gains on, on everything. That's yeah. phenomenal. Holly, and your I numbers think, were good to begin with. I think you're doing good, Holly. Yeah, yeah you're, doing you're doing good. How long have you been working out for? Um, so I started lifting about three, like lifting consistently three years ago oh, before yeah. that on and off. Um, I started with just like a strength class at the gym, but then after like four or five months, I started maps anabolic. And once I did that, I was just kind of hooked on maps programs because I saw so much faster progress than yeah. I did in the classes. And, yeah. um, you're kicking ass. Yeah. So I just, I went anabolic performance, aesthetic and symmetry. And I, I, I've gone through so many at this point. It's been so much fun to see what sort of things I learned in each one. You're, you're kicking yeah. ass. Holly. Yeah, Those awesome. are great lifts at five, two, uh, to be able to lift that much. You're doing great. And are, do you do cardio? Do you do you track your steps? Do you do anything else? Um, so I was tracking steps. I haven't worn my tracker in a while, but I'm typically between seven and 10,000. Uh, I don't really, I don't do a lot of cardio. I just do some walking and then occasionally I'll do like 15 to 20 minutes of zone two like on the elliptical or something yeah. when I'm done lifting. You're doing great. What's Holly, your... I, Holly, I want to put you in the forum just so I can remind you how awesome you are. So that's how you just need to, you just need oh, someone to, you, you just need someone to tell yeah. you that every couple You're a 130 weeks. pound girl, 20% body fat, which is good. Squatting 215, 15 pound gain from before. Consistent for three years. Your calories are 22 to 2300 calorie. I mean, you're, you're, you're doing really good. I yeah. think you just got in your head yeah. and that was a small I I reverse did. diet. I wouldn't have reverse dieted you at 60 to 80 calories. I would have had you go up to hundred at least at the very minimum. So yeah. you're doing good. Okay. I had a feeling you were going to tell me I was just impatient, but <laughs> yeah, I wanted okay. to hear it from you, I guess. No, yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah. No, you're doing good. We're going to put you in the forum. And then if you feel like this again, I want you to message us in there and just tell us what's been going yeah. on. And then we can talk by, you off. By the, the way, again. side note, if, if you feel good at the calories you're eating and you feel healthy and you're satisfied, you know, small bulks are great to build strength, but don't feel obligated to have to go and reverse diet to try and get that up. I mean, the idea is to put you in a position that feels good and sustainable. And then from there, you can move up or down into these kind of short periods of two months if you want to get a little leaner or build a little muscle. But if you feel good at those calories, you feel healthy, you feel satisfied, you're going to the gym, you feel good. Like There's no reason to like fret over trying to push it in any direction. That being said, you also already said to me that the, you were you felt the appetite increase. That's your body telling you it wants more and it yep. wants to build more. So yep. I, I say feed that. Yeah. Feed that. Trust the process. You're going to be able, if you make good choices, right? So when you get those appetite crate and you don't go out and you go eat like an asshole, you're going to be okay. If you make good whole food choices, 
keep that high protein diet, I promise you those calories are going to get partitioned over to building muscle. Yeah. The way you're training, the way consistent you are, how good, like That's you're excellent. in a really good place. If you're if you are if your body's telling you to eat more, eat more. Mm -hmm. Feed it more calories. That's what I'd be telling you as your coach. And I'm going to get you in the forum and then I want you when you have moments like this during this process to just message us, tag us, and then we'll keep you on this. And I'd love to see where you're at in like two, three months of actually training like this. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Like a little follow-up question. So I've been tracking now with this whole thing for a while and I kind of miss intuitive eating. Do you think it's possible to like do a reverse diet in like an intuitive eating framework or is that just a little too i do it, it, i do and you know what it looks like what i just said is if you're hungry if you're hungry eat. make good food choices if you're hungry eat just mm -hmm. make good choices that's it where people fuck up is they make bad choices when yeah. they, they, they get cravings and then they're like oh then they pile on the other stuff if you eat and whenever you get hungry, you make a balance, you make a high protein, good choice of carbohydrate diet or, or, or meal. I've never seen a client go wrong that yeah, way. Yeah. And if you're lifting and you're strength training and you listen to the body like That's that, how I do it. you yeah. will build muscle. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for taking the time to answer my question. It was so fun talking to you guys. Thanks, right, Holly. Holly. Thank Appreciate you. it. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> how often we get in our own head. Yeah, uh, totally. Yeah. I mean, listen, a 60 pound surplus, you're not going to gain a pound of body fat in a week. It's Bro, it takes no, it's physiologically yeah. impossible. No, it takes almost six weeks. I know. I yeah, yeah. I was like trying <laughs> to do the math. Trying, like, yeah. Trying yeah. to figure out what, what, what it was we're missing. And, and you know what 60, by the way, for people listening, do you know what a 60, what 60 calories looks like? Yeah, nothing. Yeah. What is that? Five almonds? That fluctuates almonds? so easily. Yeah. yeah it's like, yeah. yeah, you could be, and you could be, uh, most people are off when they track their calories by at least that much when, even when they weigh and oh, measure. She's getting stronger. She's hungry yeah. to your point. I mean, she, yeah, her body's like signaling her, like, let's feed the yeah, body. Yeah. Different right. conversation. If she's not cueing me with that, if yeah. she's like. I'm weaker. Yeah, I don't feel strong in the gym. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I'm stuffing myself. Okay, different conversation. But if you're like telling me, man, I'm getting strong, Adam. I feel good. Yep. I'm hungry. Yep. Yeah, My body is going hungry well. all the time. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah, we're doing the right thing. Totally. Our next caller is Caleb from Utah. Hey, Caleb, what's happening? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, man. What's How up? can I help you? Hey, so I just want to say, first off, appreciate everything you guys do. I know you guys hear it all day, every day, but uh, I listen to a handful of podcasts and this is like the only one I listen to religiously. So thank you. I appreciate everything you guys put out. Thanks, but um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll read it just pretty much straight off my email. So a little bit of background. Um, so I've always been pretty lean, never been able to put on a ton of muscle. Um, I've listed, I've lifted weights fairly consistently since I was about 14. I'm six one. Uh, longest time I stuck at about 175. About a year ago, started trying to eat a little bit more, didn't really track anything, got a little bit stronger, gained like three or four pounds. Um, the past, so I guess at the time I wrote this, um, the past three to four months, I started tracking macros a little bit more, I'm mostly like protein and just calories. Um, target is about 4,000 calories, trying to eat between about like 225 to 250 grams of protein. Um, I was working out about five to six days a week doing a push-pull lower body split. Uh, first month of doing that, um, so the first couple months, I guess, uh, I gained about you know another five-ish pounds. Um, my lifts went up fairly noticeably, but then I kind of hit a plateau, and I feel like I since then haven't really been able to you know burst through that plateau of like my my newbie gain bulked. I guess I don't know if that's a thing, but um, so I guess questions. I mean, how do I adjust my workouts or diet? to kind of burst through the plateau um, and how realistically is it to like somebody who's pretty genetically skinny or lean to see some pretty significant like growth and strength. And I guess I'll, I'll throw in a couple of things. That's okay. Just like as an update. So I think I wrote this at the end of October. Uh, so until about Christmas time, I actually got up to about 191 at about 11% body fat, wow. which before I was sitting about like seven, eight percent. Uh, we just had a second kid about two months ago. So that's kind of like thrown my schedule off quite a bit. So most of January has been pretty inconsistent as far as eating and working out. And since then, I just did an in-body this morning. I'm actually down to 182 at the same 11% body fat, which is kind of confusing. I really had to like deal with losing weight, but staying up in body fat. So really just trying to figure out how to navigate going forward with my goals. Well, going forward, you lost some muscle, but going forward, yeah. um, you'll gain some of that back real quickly because you had it in the first place. Who's also programming? 
Yeah, and I was just going to ask you, if you're eating 4,000 calories, if that's where you were at, I don't think it's a diet thing. I think it's a workout thing for sure. By the way, yeah. how's your sleep right now with the second kid? It's It's gotten a little bit better. It's been super inconsistent. We actually, this past week, switched from working out like five to six days a week to doing three days, a, three, maybe four, just because my sleep has been awful yeah. and I'm just like exhausted all the time. And so trying to make a little bit of adjustments to get more sleep. So right now I'm, I'm probably like, I was probably between five and a half to six and a half. Now I'm pushing more like six and a half to seven Okay, on a nightly basis. Yeah. I think, I think the, the adjustment is the workout yeah, well, and uh, I think you were working out too much before. Well, I mean, are you, do you write your own program or like how, who, how do you, how do you, how do you train? Where did that come from? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess it's just small variations from what I grew up doing. I guess yeah. I grew up just kind of working out with like football, basketball teams, working out with my dad that we, we always just kind of did push, pull, lower split. So I've tried to vary like rep ranges, but other than that, or like Bro. maybe a couple new workouts. Bro, we're going to, yeah. we're going to put you on maps. We're going to yeah, put you on maps and a ball. And I'm watch. You're going to, you're going to follow change. the three day a week yeah. version, follow it exactly how it's laid out. Resist the temptation to want to add or do other things. Follow the program to a T. I guarantee that in three months time, it'll blow your mind. Yeah. Promise you. Sweet. Promise. So like a, like a overarching goal, I guess is I'd love to hit like the thousand pound club with like my three main lifts, just because I've never been like super strong. I feel like that's kind of a benchmark I'd love to hit. Um, I mean, is that, do you feel like that's realistic as far as yeah, where yeah. I'm at yeah, yeah. with maps anabolic, all that stuff? Well, yeah. Yeah. Start anabolic and then maybe move on to power lift or something like that. So you get more specifically focused on those big lifts. Cause yeah, yeah it, I mean, if you put that kind of attention and detail with uh, your mechanics and the way that, you know, you, you can perfect that whole process. Like you're going to see a lot of, Awesome gains. Yeah, sure. MAPS Anabolic, mm -hmm. and then uh, after that, if your sleep continues to get a little better, switch to MAPS Power Lift. Stay, mm -hmm. keep, the cal keep the protein intake high. That would be the most important thing right now. So if your body weight's around 180, you said 181 or 182, I would, yeah. Hit, yeah, I would hit at least 180 grams of protein a day. Closer to 200, probably better. Let's keep mm -hmm. that consistent. You don't need to necessarily track anything else. Just don't eat garbage. You're going to be totally fine. Right. I think, yeah, you were working out too much, and that was the plateau. The plateau was you just too much volume. Yep. Yeah, like got to recover. Yeah, dude, like three full body workouts a week programmed properly. There's way more to it than just that, but most people build the most muscle and strength following something like that, not I, not a five or six day a week routine. You're gonna, it's going to change your life, I promise you. If you do that, if you do what he said protein-wise and eating correctly and you follow anabolic to a T – I guarantee it's going to blow your mind, especially somebody who's been lifting pretty much on and off his whole life and has like kind of a, a routine that you do push, pull, split. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you go do what we're the full body three days a week. Watch what it's going to do. I just, you're, you're a perfect. No wasted effort. Yeah. 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 How, how old is the second okay. one, by the way? How, how far, how, how old is your baby? So two months. So oh. we got a two and a half year old and a two month old. So we're, uh, got yeah. Well, you we might got, not be, got I don't know, man. You might not be getting good sleep here for a couple <laughs> yeah, of years. I was gonna say, <laughs> you know, we, we thought, we thought the baby was going to be the tough one. It turns out that was not the case. Yeah. And yeah. It, yeah, it's been crazy. But, um, so it's been because there's a lot more of like helping out with kids. It's not just super simple. It's a lot harder to like meal prep and make sure like my diet's down to a T like it was before. So I've been pretty consistent as far as hitting those protein marks, but the calorie hasn't always been consistently, you know, pushing 4,000. Is that going to hurt me if, you know, I have the occasional day where, you know, I'm, I'm maybe like 3,000, not quite no. hitting the 4,000. Like it's a big mark. But no, you're eating adequate calories. Uh, really, it was your programming. Yeah. I mean, if your calories yeah. get down to like 2,000, 1,500, you know, consistently. Right. But you would be, listen, when the, mu when the body wants to build muscle, and, and you're not going to gain, you know, 15 pounds of muscle a month. That doesn't work that way. It's a slow process, right. even when everything's being is done right. You don't need that many calories to build a pound of muscle. So if you gained a pound, of, you know, if you gain two pounds of lean body mass a month consistently, which is just kick ass, that's like 20 pounds in a mm -hmm. year, right? That'd be like, you're crushing, you're flying. That's not that many calories. Where, where people yeah. start to get caught up is the, is the, is the programming with something like that. Now, if you're too low and you know, then that makes a big difference. Well, but yeah, especially three thousand, you know, so a guy your size, like you're fine. Yeah, you're you're gonna be good, bro. Just hang, just trust the trust us, trust the process, and I promise we won't let you down. 
And then I know with, I've listened to some people who are on maps anabolic and there's like some people do trigger sessions. Some people don't, I don't really know what those are just from like totally by listening. So would you guys say, do them include those or yeah. okay, do them. Yeah, do yeah. them. Yeah. And they're easy. So if you have resistance bands, that's all you need. Mm -hmm. And it'll take you about six to seven minutes, two to three times a okay. day on the days in between your workouts. So literally while you're at home in the morning, seven minutes in, at lunch, you know, seven minutes but or before bed, seven minutes. Do not make the mistake that it, what people do is they over intensify. It's those. not a workout. It is not designed to be a workout. It's you should not be sweating. You're just getting a pump. You should not be struggling. Okay. It's literally like a little pump. It's a little tiny pump a couple times a day. And on and just and there's inside the program there's a tutorial and blueprints and everything so it it, it coaches you through everything on what to do so open up the program go through all of it watch the videos follow it to a T we won't let you down sweet right. yeah I think this will be pretty solid so I appreciate it guys you got it brother right thanks on. for calling in man congratulations yep. on the baby that's right hey, yeah thanks hang thanks in there for hang call. in there yeah and we'll send <laughs> we'll send you that maps anabolic program I appreciate it guys you all got right, it man. man. All right, bye. Later. You know, most people, most young men especially, you take them from a five-day split yep. to a three-day well-programmed full-body workout. That alone, no change in diet so long as you know, it's adequate. Yeah, a lot of times it's shocking the difference. The first time yeah. I did it, the first time I, I'd already been strength training for over a decade. The first time I did it, I gained seven pounds of lean body mass. Like yeah. it just... No change in anything. It was just the programming that and made that it, big one. It makes a huge difference too if you if you're also coming from a place of potentially kind of overdoing it, right? So he if he's overdoing the That's amount right. of volume and intensity in his training, yep. he's also hurting a little bit on sleep. And then in addition mm -hmm. to that, he has some days where he misses calories. And the programming is pretty similar to what he's kind of been doing his whole yeah. life. Yeah. You shake that up with a three day a week full New body stimulus, routine, better oh. recovery, yeah, yeah. better Just, programming. And boom. Watch. We did forget to tell him. I didn't ask him if he trains a failure. You you you, you got to stop the sets about two or three reps before you fail. Don't go to failure, especially on a, a full body type routine. That great, would just be too much. Great part is we got we have before pictures, right? He sent over a photo where he's we'll at now. After. Watch, watch after he's gone through anabolic. Awesome. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and, and check out all of our free fitness guides. We have fitness guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano. And Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 